Good morning. Yellow. What a, what a soft, nice welcome. Usually, like, I'm yelling at somebody. This is, this is nice. Hey, y'all. Uh. Nice little soft <laughs> time. <laughs> Well, ASMR. <laughs> Welcome to a much gentler morning ritual. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I loved it so much. <laughs> That's going to be uh, the level know, of hyper. Is, at I think this is we're going to do our. This is like our uh, NPR talk radio announcer voice. Is that what that is? Oh, oh God. <laughs> What, what's the only NPR show I watch? Snap Judgment? Like, hey, you cool cats and kittens, welcome to Snap Judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do get that reference, we should hang out. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to an episode, uh, another episode of Morning Ritual. Uh, to avoid being got by the bingo card lovingly created by our audience, we are going to jump right into an introduction because one of the spots of the bingo uh, card is that it takes us 45 minutes to get to the intros. Oh. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is, I, I should warn you now, Sarah, uh, we have a bit of an adversarial relationship with our audience. <laughs> I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your audience, but they want to see us destroyed. Uh, it's normally <laughs> friendly, but I'm ready to fight y'all. I love yeah. you all and you're going down. <laughs> yeah. They're like, don't worry, we made we mainly want uh noir. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, hello everybody. Uh I'm one of the hosts, Noir. Uh, uh you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram as the Noir Nigma. You can find me on TikTok by just dropping the the. Uh I have technically done my intro, so I am safe from the bingo card. So that's uh I'm passing it up to you, Anita. Maybe you'll hand it to the guest. Boom, we're professionals. Uh, hi, I'm Anita, or Panita, or Critical Mrs. because this is my channel, and you can find me here most times. Um, actually, you can find me here all the time. I live here. I live in Zoom calls, and I just flip from mm. Zoom call to Zoom call. Uh, Sarah, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, boy, between that and Discord calls, absolutely same. Hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, I'm Sarah is Coffee on literally everything, um, Twitch, Discord. TikTok, that's where I started. Ooh, baby. Uh, and uh, now I'm here hanging out with these lovely people. So hello. Uh, I, I have to apologize. I was wrong about the chat. I said they namely wanted me, but apparently they got some spice for you in case you get away. Yeah. Sarah inducted uh, us into a cult. Uh, <clears throat> oh, boy. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you whoa. want that? Now listen. Now listen. Let me explain. <laughs> Shit, Let me we didn't we thoroughly bet. <laughs> Cut the stream. I can explain everything. Uh, it's literally, um, have y'all ever, first of all, what is y'all's experience with Stardew Valley? Um, completely off topic of TTRPG. I, I, no, we, 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 we both, we've had entire episodes where we all talk about TTRPG. Um, the bingo card is how many tangents we go off on. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, Fantastic. Stardew Valley, I I I have not played it. I am very aware of it. I I'm being pressured into playing, but I was also pressured into playing Animal Crossing and then everybody mm. abandoned me. So I don't know if I I don't know if I have that uh, trust in me. Can't anymore. take that kind of heartbreak again. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, what opinion, what's your uh, what's your experience with Stardew? Uh, my experience with Stardew Valley is very limited. Uh, mostly to meme and through the internet site, guys. I've learned most of my knowledge of Stardew Valley through osmosis. <laughs> then I am ready to give you another osmosis opportunity. Uh, <laughs> So there is a there is a certain thing that you can access that I never knew about. I've been playing the game for two years, and then I ported it onto one of my streams. Um, and apparently, there is a situation where if you fish a specific fish out of the ocean and drop it in a box, you are rewarded with something called humtigf. That is spelled H-M-T-G-F. I don't know what it means, and it's humtigif? terrifying. It's terrifying looking. You can look it up. Wow. It's absolutely horrific and when it came into my inventory i had two choices and one was to be terrified by it and one was to pledge my undying fealty to it 
and did. <laughs> and chat just went along with it. Uh, <laughs> And um, so now it's ended in uh, I, I'm putting a I'm putting a reward where I'll just go on a praise tangent of him, and uh, there's an emote that's coming. So uh, I started a cult a little bit uh, because of a terrifying batch of pixels. Uh, slipped, fell, uh, started a little bit of a cult. <laughs> started a little bit of a cult. Kind of an oopsie just, on my part. Just the sculpt of cult. <laughs> Tiny bit. It's fine. Okay, so uh, this is a recent development, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, like the last two or three weeks, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm just really, I'm really good at that, like, religious uh, evangelical pastor at the pulpit speak. A little too good, some might say. And so... Uh, nothing has ever gone wrong with the charismatic character. Nothing, nothing just... has ever gone wrong. <laughs> All Sarah do is start cult, eat hot chip, and lie. Cal, good to see you again. Oh, boy. See, I was going to start the conversation about, apparently, your love of himbos, but this is... <laughs> well, this is we can, instead of love of himbos, it's love of whom to give. Love whom to give, yeah. I mean, you could you you could make the argument that Humtagiv is the ultimate himbo because Humtagiv encompasses all in his great and mighty understanding and grasp. Uh, so, potato potato, you know. <laughs> Can we make Humtagiv like a, a warlock page? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Or give them a dobe. <laughs> like... Pack of the fish. What the. What yes. domain would Hoot give have? There mm. absolutely has to be. So the fish that is involved in him to give spawning, as it were, <laughs> is a super cucumber, which is a spiny purple tube thing. I don't understand. Uh, so absolutely something to do with the sea. Yeah, I'm looking at Hoot to give. Yeah. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a, that's about right. Is that blood on the floor? <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me can't do that. It's it's safer to not look directly at him to give while you offer him your uh your patronage. It, it looks as though him to give has started with his own sacrifices for himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's the remains of a uh of a disobedient uh <laughs> mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. my god look you know what there's I... nothing better than a patron that's more hands-on so you know good on them <laughs> did you did you just see it anita yeah 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you yeah, I, I the chat understand. makes an important point yeah you can't sell him to gift uh, once you have him to give, him to give is there forever. Uh, usually you can sell most things in the game, but you can't sell that. Terrifying. So it's always a spot in your inventory? Mm-hmm. With you forever? I, I, I believe Pact of the Fisherman would be good. So, you know, a yeah. seafaring warlock, you know, <laughs> uh, who has him to give, like those, uh, you know how they carve uh, women into the prow of the ship? It yeah. would just be him to go at the prow of the ship. You know, you know how the mighty die always go. Imagining a table. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you know, uh, there, there we go. <laughs> mm. Now we know. So glad that that is my introduction to this channel. <laughs> wait, wait, Kelsey, it's your birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Kelsey! Happy birthday, Kelsey! Happy birthday! Or happy Borfmas, as Borfmas. Fame said. <laughs> you can trash him to give him, but you can't sell him. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, hipster blue. How, how dare you wrong. Dane speak to the arch priest of me to get <laughs> you, you would You would throw him to give away like some piece of trash. <laughs> the wrath of him to give rum is upon you. Uh, uh, there is so, a request from chat, though, that we ask about the crush oh, war early from Kelsey, because Kelsey has to go pick up a cake. Okay. Ooh. I Remember, I told you there was only one part of this show that was segmented. I lied. 
Uh, because I always forget about this because my brain wants this out. Uh, I, I don't want to know this, but here we are. Okay. There is I'm currently ready. a civil war occurring in the TTRPG community. Uh -huh. And there are two sides. There are the side that crotch dice, meaning mm -hmm. they put dice in their mouth and crotch them. There's a difference mm -hmm. between crotching and crunching. If you have edible dice, that's crunching. And that's fine. We can all agree that edible dice are meant to be crunched. That's fine. But actual dice, if you put it in your mouth and crunch it, that's 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 one side of the battle. The uh -huh. other side are people that say crunching is bad. Don't do it. We're I trying to worse. save teeth. You know, it because <laughs> how could you? No. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's bring up the scoreboard. Uh, let's see. We, we've got uh, really Lee who's too who's too much of a coward to pick us up. <laughs> be I literally have made media content about my need to bite dice. <laughs> no! No! Uh, you got all of Crutch Crew in the chat going crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you know. Crush you know. Stop the crunch, crunch, <laughs> crunch boo. Lord, Sarah. I love this. this, uh, this. They're not wrong, too. At the end of my D&D game last night, I did bite a die. Um, I have no clue. That's not what they're for. <laughs> Listen, I understand. But my brain, see, and my brain goes, bite! They've also had bite people it. on the show, though, like Abria, who works for Dice Envy. Who is weaponizing or making the dice crunch? Look delicious uh, on, purpose. on purpose. That's so true. Abria is like, I'm doing research to to put uh, smells in the ink to make oh, dice even more desirable, <laughs> like a cookie and cream dice that smells like cookies and cream. That is a low blow. That dice yeah. is never. That dice will never get rolled. <laughs> I will always be chewing it. I, <laughs> disgusting no. uh no i will say though crunch. i even though i am team crunch crew mm -hmm. i try not to make a habit of biting my dice because they're very hard and that's bad mm -hmm. for your teeth Thank so you. i have those like i have those like silicone things but if they come out with a silicone pair of dice it's over those are i'm chewing those forever it's happening you know what i i see you more as a victim of people like a <laughs> who are out here making like like just delicious looking dice. like i'm i'm not blind i see what y'all see and they do look like forbidden candy but they're not forbidden candy. <laughs> just another poor soul lost in the system <laughs> of crunch <laughs> the war on dice <laughs> <laughs> say no to dice say no to dice I swear to God, part of me wants to do like a fake documentary <laughs> of what <laughs> dice are doing to the youth. I will absolutely appear as like a tearful <laughs> guest being like, at first, I tried to resist it. <laughs> they, tried. Out here, they out here slipping D, D6s to the kids, no, they'll get a look. <laughs> you just keep going further and further down the path until eventually you find a d4 in your mouth and you wonder how did they get here for five cents a day you can say people like sarah in the um, yard so <laughs> how to get sarah mclaughlin in there <laughs> oh god pretty sure i've seen squishy dice in a video don't tell me what what is wrong y'all are enabled let's the word for the day is enablement i gotta do some research after this <laughs> first d6 is free then the next thing you know you're crouching for the game have you or someone you know been affected by the crunch you may be able to for financial compensation call this toll free number today <laughs> Well, so there you go. There you go, Kelsey. That's your birthday gift. You, you get to find out. Well, you get to see me disappointed in the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I, you know what? I think 
the crotches are outnumbering the stop the crotches. I think you know why that is, score. right? Why? Why is this? It's because, and now far be it from me to ever make a sweeping generalization, but I'm going to do it here. <laughs> a very large number of people who play D&D are neurodivergent in some way. And our little neurodivergent yeah. brains go bite, 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 bite. And dice just get caught in that crossfire. Why does you it know? look like a Jolly Rancher? Why? I am going to get you... serotonin if I put that in my mouth, 100%. <laughs> and I need I need to pump that number as much as I can. Not ADD that brain it. needs it. I'm pretty sure there is a, 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 a gummy dice specifically for neuro, neurodivergent folks that need to chew up things. Um, mm. Eight, mm. I'm ready. Forbidden fruit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you all have problems. <laughs> <laughs> so these are your teeth, and these are your teeth on crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> uh, you don't want to just... download a crunch. <laughs> you want to download a crunch? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just get the deer, the deer lion going? <laughs> you know, dice are whack. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Oh my oh god, my. I, I, I used to love the deer class because I, 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 I didn't give a fuck. Like it was the easiest A. <laughs> oh my god. I wish I'd had a cool dare class in my school. But the most interaction that I had with dare was like, I was going into like a fast food restaurant one time and they were set up outside. And I was like, I'm fully in college. I, I can't talk to you right now. I've made all my decisions. I, I didn't smoke, I didn't smoke until I was 28. So, you know, I guess dare, <laughs> I, dare, you know. Dare worked. worked. A little bit, it, it held off the inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. It, it pushed it away as far as it could. If you crunch uh, dice, I mean, you will get pregnant and you will die. <gasps> Her arms were cut off. Her legs were cut off. <laughs> oh my god. Can we get one of those like little you, 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 you know the little uh, Christian comic strips that they leave everywhere for you the to chick fly? tracks? Yes! Oh my god! Can we get one of those specifically about crunching dice? Oh god, I wish I was an artist. Um, have hey, y'all seen the chick track about Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, I have, and I love it. I love it with my entire if I wish somebody made a shirt with just each each page of it, I would wear it all the time. Every uh, day. Every day. Faith, 100%. Uh, there is drug abuse resistance education. It, mm -hmm. It was a class that they, it, it was a, a, a movement that they sent around uh, places during the war on drugs, mainly inner city schools. And they were like, hey, just so y'all know, drugs bad. We were like, what? <laughs> In Canada, we had something called the PACE program, which was similar. Mm. I forget Very what it nice. was for. I think it was See, like a I grew up in community interaction or something like that, or enforcement or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I uh, I grew up in a in a fairly like conservative like evangelical setting. So my like dare conversation classes were like modesty and purity classes, and it all just got wrapped up in that. So Oof. yeah, 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 it's fine. It means that I can start cults with my cool language. <laughs> That's true. What's him to give stats on <laughs> dice crunching This is how and I drugs. started him to give. Yeah, him to give. Him to give says crunch those dice. Honestly, he does. <laughs> I mean, how could you resist a face like that? How could you resist? And that and that nose. Oh my god. You gotta do like the Christian youth uh. pastor voice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know you who was a down with the crunch? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> da -na 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 -na. <laughs> Just like go into that riff. That is true. Uh, Dark Lord Canada, uh, Brent. Uh, in Canada, we did have a commercial with creepy puppets that uh, told children not to put things in their mouths. Now, 
Where they're specifically. <laughs> I I would really like that actually. What's what's the jingle, Anita? <laughs> Someone drop bits in chat and I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> you you know uh, what to do. <laughs> see, here's the thing. Here's here's the terrible thing. I I I just have bits burning a hole in my in my Twitch chat. So I feel like this is a dangerous game. <laughs> Where's Alicia? Oh, oh God. Don't summon Alicia. <laughs> Alicia will make you dance, too. <laughs> uh, Alicia and I currently have a running thing. Um, I, I named a number for Alicia, so she, I owe her a song. I can't sing. Ooh. Now. We can fit up. <laughs> just just like hypothetically how many bits would it take for this jingle to happen just if we're just like talking about it very this casually is, I'm not this is do the dangerous game <laughs> <laughs> just uh, as a hypothetical idea uh brett throw the link in chat uh i can allow it i can ah nice I've had a I've had a fun little fight with my nightbot uh, where I have turned off its ability to get angry at people for posting links, but it said no gods, no kings, only nightbot, and still gets angry at people. <laughs> my uh, my nightbot gets angry, but I made it powerless. <laughs> nice. So it, so it, it's more like a villain that just goes, "You'll rule the day," <laughs> but it can't do anything. Uh, it weren't for meddling streamers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no naughty words here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop spanning emoticons. <laughs> hey, um, did you ask to put that link down? <laughs> I just want my butt to be like a shitty Inspector Gadget villain now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Inspector oh, right Gadget. Oh, so, that, there we go. that cartoon was a banger. That cartoon, oof. So that theme good. song alone. There's the I only on had... Too. Oh bless! I am gonna watch that. Um, I I only ever saw the movie with who's the Matthew dude? Matthew Matthew Broderick. Who's in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Yeah, Matthew Broderick. And at the end of every play of that movie, I played that VHS until like it was broken. Uh, they would advertise the cartoon, and I was like, I want to watch it. Oh bad. But uh, I never did, and I feel like that's uh, that's something I need to rectify in my adulthood. Nightbot is oh, the yeah. equivalent of the teacher saying the bell doesn't dismiss you. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> hate that. Love it, but okay. hate. I have a story about that. And okay, go ahead and mark your stupid fucking bingo cards because here's some tangent. Yes. I, one of my favorite high school moments was uh, during senior year. Uh, the bell went off, and the teacher was just like, hey, you know, of course, the bell doesn't dismiss you. I don't dismiss you. And instead of us all leaving the class at once, it was one at a time, and it's the most natural thing I had ever seen. It was like the class all tele telepathically decided, fuck this guy and let's make it laugh. So one person got up, he's like, hey, 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 and they just left the classroom. <laughs> and you just see this, this teacher deflate as each person leaves the classroom. Oh my the God. Perfect destruction of the, the bell doesn't uh, dismiss you. I was just like, you can go fuck yourself, sir. <laughs> honestly, like I have um, so much respect for teachers and what they do, absolutely. But at the same time, like, why, why are you gonna be an asshole? You know, like, if you're gonna be an asshole, I'm sorry, it's it's done. Goodbye. Goodbye. I, quest I question his intellect <laughs> because yeah. because there is no creature in all of nature that gives a fuck less than a senior advanced honors English class. <laughs> like, They're out. We, they are we out. We know baby. we're graduating. Kiss our ass. <laughs> I am already accepted to whatever program I want to go to. What are you going to do to me? You have no power, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> amazing. Oh my god, you can tell the one kid that wasn't sure they were gonna cry. They just kind of sit back, <laughs> just like stay. Please don't hold me back. <laughs> This counts for extra credit or something, right? <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm still here, man. <laughs> God. Uh, I had a bunch of questions that I had prepared to ask you. <laughs> oh, and, and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Michael Wayne, uh, better than my story. A teacher said, uh, said that uh, we were on the ground floor and there was a window we'd open in the summer and we just went out the window. <laughs> Though that's still a pretty good story. I feel like that's better than my story. I feel Sweet. like that. I feel like my story was fuck you, like regular, but your story is fuck you in italics. <laughs> fuck you, Mission fuck Impossible. Fuck you, but in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh goodness gracious. Early streams will always just turn into fuck around and find out. Yeah, that's kind of our energy here. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's that's fair. That's fair. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There is one question that I am going to make sure to ask before we continue on the tangent. So, uh, you got your start on TikTok, which I did. I, 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 I've been a fan of your TikToks for a very long time, uh, and now you're you're booming on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, so you've got a unique perspective on this question that I want to ask, which is, where are people the worst? <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> what a question. I believe in people. Nope. I want to I want to know where to duck. <laughs> uh oh man, you know what? I'm really glad that uh first of all, I'm really glad that you have a lot of mods in chat right now. Uh second of all, cuz that kind of ties into this question. I I think that the places I'm going to be a little kind uh, <laughs> because I think that the places where the people are the worst is also where they have the capacity to, to be the best. Um, okay. So personally, I've had the most, and last night I had the worst experience that I've ever had on Twitch. Oh uh, gosh. However, I'm sorry, first off. <laughs> it's okay. I'll tell the story. It'll be wild. It'll be great. Uh, <laughs> but I will say, people are like very kind on TikTok when you find your community. I think the way that like the toxicity comes in is when uh, there's a new, the new spicy wave of bullying that's come around where people don't realize they're bullying because they think they're just having fun and making a joke, but there's actually another person at the end of the screen. And mm -hmm. I've seen that a lot with like younger audiences. Uh, oh. But I don't really have a very young audience, so I just kind of see that and observe it. Uh, so <laughs> I haven't, I have not been subjected to that, thankfully. My TikTok experience has been mostly wonderful, except when I say very spicy takes like, hey, racism in, in TTRPGs isn't cool. And then people are like, fuck you. And it's like, what the fuck did she get? I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, that's the only time that I ever really, because there are some like uh, old sentinel sentinels of the old guard on TikTok that get oh very gosh. upset. Yeah. And honestly, they can go fuck themselves. So I don't really care. Um, but on Twitch, uh, something something exciting happened where uh, we have, I like to believe, one of the sweetest communities on Twitch. Uh, everyone is so wonderful and like, so like uh, they contribute and they're like active and they enjoy the stories that we put forward. Last night, we got stealth raided by a Fortnite crew of about 300 people. Oh God. Oh my God. I've seen that happen in person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And thankfully on that channel, we have like 15 mods. So it was just like 15 minutes of our mods just going ham in the chat, <laughs> banning people, just going insane. And it was wonderful. Like it was stressful to see the things that people were putting in the comments because Fortnite yeah. people really have no boundaries about anything. Uh, but it was really satisfying to see someone say some heinous shit and then go, this person has been banned by a moderator. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> die mad, die mad. <laughs> uh, 
So it was very fun. It was very stressful, but very fun. With that said, so I'd say Twitch is like the place where I feel like there's the most capacity for kindness, but also the most capacity for just insane, insane toxicity. I don't know AJ, what you're not it banning was anybody about. yet. You're good. I don't know what it was about last night, but you got raided, uh, Zombie Kills got raided, and I think somebody else got raided. I they I just be people are just it I, must I have don't been, know what it was. <laughs> it must have been some kind of attack because uh when we were I'm a I'm a mod on that channel as well. We were going through all the banned people and all of the accounts had been created like within the last three days kind of thing. If they were all created like an hour ago, I would be like, okay, this is like an asshole streamer who was like uh let's just put some people in a chat but like it was within the last week that all the accounts were created so i think it was one of those one of those weird things where people were like let's just watch the world burn uh but they they didn't i just do don't it. know what people get out of that <laughs> uh, but I, I can tell you as as a mod to a few different channels there's nothing like the post raid high that you get as a mod where you're just looking with your other mods it's just like, good doing battle with you. <laughs> good, stuff. good stuff. Also, I feel like I have to, I have to stop whatever we're talking about to just pay homage to your cat, Ash, who looks like the sweetest child. She is a darling, <laughs> and her purrs are very loud. Very, very loud. What do we My think of unbanned requests on Twitch? Uh, hmm, good question. I like um, them. <laughs> I uh I I I occasionally like denying them. Uh I don't I think that there's I think that like if somebody does like one thing and they get banned for it and then like 3 months later they're like, "Hi, can I come back?" and it wasn't too terrible. Sure. You're on I, thin ice. 9 out of 10 though, I find that the person that I banned doesn't generally come back. Mhm. Mm I yeah, had three exactly. trolls come in on my birthday stream. Um Mm -hmm. a couple months ago uh one of them was like the problem with when i stream solo is i stream under the lgbtq tag because i'm non-binary yeah. and i'm bisexual so yes you could hear the purse um <laughs> so i had someone come in and like say like threaten that like my parents hate me. I'm uh, I'm pansexual. Please accept me because my parents don't. Oh, like shit, that stuff. That uh. sort of thing. And then it's just like, I was like, listen, I'm gonna give you a timeout and a warning, and like, because like, obviously, you don't come into like the chat and like, there's like some things where like they were, they were talking about maybe harming themselves, and I'm like. Mm -hmm. Don't do that in our chat. I'm going to give you, like, I'm going to give you a soft, like, a soft ban. Do that. Like, come back when you have, like, the right attitude about these things. And right. then I had someone else yeah. in my chat that I think was their buddy come in and call me toxic. And I was like, no, yeah. both of you get banned. And then I had the unban. I had the unban <laughs> request from both of them. And the unban request from the one person was like, please accept me. My parents don't. And the other one was like, they were just trying to be like accepted. I'm like, I, I, I don't, I don't know what all that is. I can tell you that uh, my the the trolls that I get are a lot less clever. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. I've uh, I've been around. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, like <laughs> I don't even. I mean, and the thing is, is, you know, I I I I always feel kind of like. Well, not I don't feel bad for people like that, but I'm just I just I'm curious. Like, what do you get out of like seeing somebody try to make something and then go, I'm going to try and make their day a little bit worse? Like, I just I never understood people like that. I, it's my I, turn to ruin it. <laughs> it's just like there's a deep sense of insecurity and 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 I feel like fear behind that. Where it's mm -hmm. just you know. I, I I think on some level it's you're doing what I want to do, but I don't have the sauce to do yeah. what you're doing right now. 
So instead of creating, I'm going to use this energy that I want to use to create to destroy. And it's mm-hmm. just like, okay, you could do that, or you could just try and fuck it, turn the camera on and try and make something and Go realize that it. your first hundred things that you're going to make are going to suck. And then your next hundred might suck. And then the hundred after that might suck. But eventually, you'll hit something that doesn't suck. And that's the start of it. But you exactly. can't you can't get to whatever number that it takes for your stuff to get good if you're too busy like sending nooses to people in DMs. Like it just you gotta you gotta <laughs> choose where you put that energy. And yeah. uh, sadly these guys put it uh into some dumb shit. So it's just meh. So fucking sad. My personal <laughs> theory, uh, which first of all, Hips the Bloom and Chat Harper. Uh, yeah, I had a very, we had a very similar situation on one of our D&D streams. Uh, the two that I usually tend to get is ones like that, Anita, um, where it's like, uh, I want we had one where, streamer. yeah, or, or like someone came into our chat, I remember talking about like their grandmother and like hunting somebody down and we were like, you got to get out of here. Or I get like the typical existing as a femme presenting person on the internet and being like, ah, yeah. I'm gonna find you, kind of thing, and I'm just like, Wait, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm oh yeah. Find you? Oh yeah. Oh they want to find you bad. Uh, but so, what I usually tend to think and believe, like my personal theory on it, is that like very close to yours, Noir, where it's like people want to be seen and they want to be like noticed and understood at the base of who they are. And sometimes people don't get that and they're like, and that in itself is very tragic. Uh, But so they see people like us who are streaming and are being seen and approved of and understood. And I'm sure that must be very frustrating if you don't get that in your personal life. And so it's like, well, I'm gonna be seen at any cost by shitting on you (laughs) and it's just like, oh man, I feel bad for you, but at the same time, Go get wrecked. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah. And you know, and just and just to add on to like both of our ideas, I think there is like it within that group, there is, I think, I would I hope <laughs> this is this is my faith in humanity. I hope that there is a smaller group that sees, you know, a black man. A woman, a bisexual woman, uh, or or just somebody who's pre- femme presenting in general, and they think, you know, as a you know this kind of person, I'm better than you know all of that. Oh, so yeah. I so I should have your numbers. I should have your sponsorship. How Why dare are you? you? Streaming? Yeah, like how dare you be successful when you're you know when you're a black like it's just like. Yeah. I don't know, man. Just out here. <laughs> I'm out, <laughs> I guess. Back to that old guard, right? Well, true, true. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. That don't want these things to change because they're so used to being the status quo. 100%. Yeah, if you I don't like know that, if though, I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but true. Uh, I'm. You guys probably follow uh, Super Dylan on... Yeah, we love Diana, Diana. correct? Yeah, they have this amazing bit on their TikTok about uh, two white like guys the two that. white guys do them doing the podcast. That cracks me up every time because that is exactly the vibe. <laughs> uh, no good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it really is. Um, look, it's it's really obnoxious. It, okay, so I would just talk about it. And here's the tension. I don't know how so many of these guys are fans of Matt Mercer. It doesn't make sense to me. Like I'm trying sense. to reconcile, reconcile it, and it just they love Matt Mercer, hate the gays and the blacks and the and the alphabet mob. I don't. I do, it's what <laughs> it is wild and like and like no no hate to Matt Mercer. Like Matt Mercer is an amazing DM, but like how can you like that style? And not like this. Like these go together, my friend. <laughs> these are it's, it's peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> You're like, I love God. the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I'll tell you if a jelly ever comes in my house, what I'm gonna do? Like, no, bro. Like that's not how this works. 
See a jelly streamer poking their face around here? <laughs> Ow! Jelly streamer is the new titty streamer. <laughs> yes! Oh, uh, and, and just, I, I, the, there, okay. <laughs> there is a thought that I have seen a lot of, like, when, when I tell people that I do Twitch streaming, and a, a, a lot of people that I was, was, I'm still friends with some of them, but I, I have to hard check them. Um, because I have the benefit of seeing behind the scenes there's this assumption, and I hate how readily accepted it is. Um, and, and, and forgive me for taking a while to like get no, to the it. point. It's just there is this this assumption that it is easier for them presenting people on Twitch and on TikTok and on all these sites. Oh, don't you know it's because, so easy well, when you're just hot on the internet. Yeah, you, you, if you're a, if you're a hot chick, then yeah, you're gonna get numbers. And like, I have had the benefit of seeing a lot of beautiful femme and women work behind. Nobody I know works harder than Persephone. Oh, Seth and she is one of the most beautiful people on the planet. And like, I keep like, whenever I hear that, I get a little upset now because <laughs> it's just like. Tr Try and have a conversation with Sefi. You'll probably get back a, I'm busy right now, give me a second. <laughs> it's, it's just like, so I I hate how readily accepted that is. And I have talked to people that I know in real life where I'm just like, yeah, you know, I hate this bitch mark in uh, Twitch. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. They're just like, oh, you had tits, right? And I'm like, well, first off, I do have tits. Uh, so I <laughs> They're not helping. They are Look not upon. Helping. <laughs> Look upon my mood, city trip. <laughs> <laughs> Look upon ye mighty and despair. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, <laughs> damn, we, 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 we're grazing on the topic that would lead to the bad guy, but that is on the second half. But we, we we're gonna have Fantastic. more fun with trolls. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, before our show, you actually said something that I didn't know, which was you mm. said that you're an actress or yes. actor. I did not know that. Like, I um, so what? what kind of acting ha have you done? And like, how do you, I, I'm a huge improv nerd. So I'm always going to kind of ask, how did your acting color your TTRPG experience? Because I love finding that out. Noir, I am so glad that you said that because I was about to like soft prepare you both for the kind of actor that I actually was. Uh, so I, I was a traditional actor like Shakespeare, that kind of shit, absolutely. Um, I, I did some musicals, although I didn't get into musicals until college and I had a lot of like growing up to do. But what I actually did professionally before uh, Sir Panini hit was... I was a professional improviser. <laughs> uh, hey! so, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I was in a, I was in a public, uh, I was in a public theater, uh, in the in the uh, center of I, I, I dox myself constantly because I'm in a big city. I'm like, who's gonna find me? Uh, which I feel is a dangerous thing to say on a stream, but a dangerous game. Uh, <laughs> playing a dangerous game here. Uh, but I, I was in a theater uh, at the center of Philadelphia and we would play every Friday, Saturday night. Uh, we'd, we'd pack out those houses. It was very fun. It was a very enjoyable time. Um, and I honestly think that like, I didn't, I didn't have the courage to get into things like D and D until I became a professional improviser. Uh, okay. So it's it's very interesting how that how that ties into each other. I um, truly believe everybody needs to take at least one improv class. It'll oh, help please. you so yes. much with your TNT. <laughs> even if it just helps you, even if it just helps you get your head out of your ass a little bit, honestly. Yes. Because the first improv class that I took was. Uh, Can I be a little shitty for one moment? Uh, this it was is, me this is realizing you can be shitty all day. <laughs> it was me realizing for the first time that cis straight white men were not the funniest people on the planet. 
<laughs> because oh, they came into these classes and just thought that they were the funniest and so automatically were not. Because the thing about improv is like, you have to like have a level of humility and like understand that you have to work together as a team to make a joke instead of just stand up there and be the whole most hilarious person ever. And so these dudes, not all of them, of course, but many of them would just step up there and be like, I have a joke to deliver and this scene can screw itself because I'm gonna tell this joke because and then it wouldn't be funny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they would not be funny at all. And everyone else who had been like culturally used to taking a back seat, working together as a team were hilarious because they knew how to work together in the scene. And it was like this huge revelation for me of like, oh my God, I can be funny. Uh, and then I was like, I gotta chase that high. But I feel like that really, <laughs> goes into like D&D &D because D&D &D at its core and other TTRPGs at their core are a group game where you yes. work together to achieve a goal. And a lot of times the goal is just having fun. Uh, but you're not going to achieve that if one person is just like vehemently taking the spotlight at all times. So I think that's the best way that uh, improv helps with D&D &D is that it teaches you how to like enjoy something in a group effort situation uh so i, I love it I, abs I absolutely agree with that i i also feel like improv really puts a spotlight on what not to do <laughs> yup i have some i have some improv horror stories yeah i i, I was the youngest in my improv group Oh, by boy. a lot and it was a lot of older white dudes mm -hmm. in my very first like in our very first show um they're so going scared. up doing doing whatever joke and it's it's set in the past <laughs> so you are like so you already know this is not gonna be good <laughs> like yep. I'm somebody ready. somebody is playing abraham lincoln and i'm like this is not going to go well for me i want to leave and oh like, and so like i do that thing where you like you're off the stage and you're like please don't please don't tag me here please don't bring me in and they oh, brought boy. yeah they they brought me in you guessed it <laughs> oh god yeah why 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 is like I know why, but also why. I forgot the historical figure they made me though. It was it was the black. I I I I I should remember this, especially during Black History Month. But I blocked it out. I blocked this memory <laughs> out. Uh, and then the, the the joke that somebody had, and I I <laughs> I cannot believe this is an actual story that I'm about to tell you right now. The joke that somebody told that they thought was hilarious. And at the time I wasn't as militant as I am now. So I yes and and made it funny, mm -hmm. uh, which I really shouldn't have done. But the joke was layaway for slaves. <laughs> Slave away. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> the audacity of old white men. <laughs> so I'm just like caucasity. The absolute caucasity. <laughs> Why are that's the question that I have? Why are? Why How are did men? you make that funny? How did you do that? I am shocked. <laughs> If that had happened in any scene that I had done or like something <laughs> equivalent, I would I would walk off the fucking stage. I would walk oh off my the goddamn God. earth. Yeah. That, uh, oh. that was my very first experience at an improv show. Oh my God. That was, yeah. <laughs> Things got have, better though. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that that wasn't like, 
a horror experience that took you away from it as a whole because nah. i know that there's a lot of people who like not only just with improv but with like ttrpgs have these horrendous experiences and rightfully are just like i can't do that anymore oh i'm glad that you're still able to find the joy in it despite people okay. being shitty how could you make that funny? Oh, because I described I described the process of, of what it would cost you. It would just cost you your dignity and the dignity of your uh, ancestors, and uh, the it, it's going to cost one very awkward improv room, uh, and it's <laughs> going to cost a very very awkward car ride home if you're a white person with black eye hair. So like that, I think that's how I turned it around. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way that's the only way it's really all you can do like it's when, just when, calling them out on their bullshit absolutely yeah <laughs> oh my god uh yeah, yeah see i was i was so so fucking grateful that i was uh i was on what i personally believe to be one of the best teams in the city because we had very hard lines and rules which a lot of people like get mad at in improv but uh when you have hard lines and rules you're not being shitty to people uh which is a really great thing to have in your improv troupe and then i would be like i love improv and i'd go and watch a show in the city and i'd be like oh i can tell they don't have these rules in place there's nothing I'm worse stay with my group there's nothing worse than watching another team and you can tell somebody's uncomfortable Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's awkward in live plays too, and we've seen that. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not good to see somebody dealing with a lot of ugh when they didn't yep. sign up for the ugh. 100%. And that's why, and that's why, like, uh, safety tools are important. That's why consents pages are like so good because it's not just a matter of like setting lines and boundaries. It's a matter of like understanding the people that you're playing with. It's so so important and so get the vibe straight off yeah. like what are people comfortable with what aren't people comfortable with uh so that's another hill that i will die on that gets people mad at me in certain spheres uh they're like why can't you just play the game and it's like it's a it's it's equivalent it's the equivalence of a session zero my guy calm down <laughs> Well, let me write an article about why session zeros need to be developed. <laughs> I, 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 I still remember that article and I go, who, why? This person got paid. <laughs> what are some <laughs> angry? I've got a question. Yes. Yeah. What are some red flags for when you join a live stream group or when <laughs> you're about to join a game? What are some red flags? I if have the G... I have one. I have a couple. Okay. For me, if the GM is constantly talking about TPKs, I back out immediately. Mm-hmm. Immediately. Yeah. Man, this is gonna be rough. I don't know if you guys are gonna make it. Like I don't know, you know, I don't want to have a TPK happen, but you know, with what I have planned, I don't know if you are gonna be able to make it. I mean, who knows? Like you are quite literally God. <laughs> Mm -hmm. If you want a TPK to happen, it's gonna happen. If you don't want a TPK to happen, doesn't have to happen. But mm -hmm. if you keep talking about it, you're telling me that you want it to happen. And I don't want, I, I, look, I, I get emotionally attached to my characters. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> The only place that I'm comfortable with people talking about TBKs is in one shots because I get chaotic about my characters at one shots and I throw them <laughs> into death. But other than that, absolutely. Uh, let's see. For me, I, I did ask this question on Twitter a little bit ago and uh, oh boy, I had to mute that thread. Uh, but <laughs> uh, so many arguments in chat in uh, the replies. But um. For me, there's a lot of like descriptors that are red flags for me uh, that aren't, if I know the DM personally and I've played games with four, I'll trust them when they use these. But if anybody says realistic or gritty or, uh, you know, anything, anything along those lines, I run far, far away. 
far away because that honestly just means that they want to run their Game of Thrones game with like the PCs, the personal play things. And I'm not interested in that in any capacity. Uh, in terms of joining and watching a stream, the minute that too many people talk over one another, I'm out. Like, <laughs> I'm like, y'all aren't, y'all aren't having fun together. You're too, you're too interested in like having your character take the spotlight. I want to see some people play a game together. So yeah. Yeah. Those are mine. What about you, Amina? Um, mine are, uh, if the, okay. So this one's very specific because this is one of those, <laughs> those stories that, that, uh, is a shared experience between Nora and I. Ooh. You Boy. get the safety checklist. Mm -hmm. But instead of letting your players fill out the lines and veils on the safety checklist, the DM takes it and does it and lets you know what is going to be in the campaign. Oof. Excuse? I, okay. Uh, to, to, to explain, it's just, here's the RPG safety checklist. Here's what's going to be in the game. <laughs> I filled it out for you. Insane. That was the game oh that uh, we were in t together. How long? How long did that last? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I I jump ship first. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I was just like, that like, that's not a safety check. Sounds that's like an unsafety affidavit. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that has a oh name now. <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a big Holy red flag for shit. me. It's a, here is, I mean, I get, like, setting expectations and setting, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were already in the game. Yeah. And the, the same checklist came out. And we're like, oh, we should probably fill this out with, like, things that we don't want in our, like, we don't want to happen to our characters. Like, things that we feel uncomfortable with in games. And the DM was like, no, don't bother. I'll fill this out. And you can see what's going to be in my game. You know, oh looking back God. on that campaign, there are a lot of there's a lot of red there flags. Are lot, there are a lot of red flags, but the thing that triggered me the most is my monk with the red speed of fifty feet getting beat by the cleric. got outrun by a cleric in full plate armor. No, <laughs> no, for the drama, <laughs> for the drama, no. I See, can't. listen. I can't. DM is so God. Every episode of that game, Sphinx knows what we're talking about. <laughs> DM is God to a measure, but fuck that. You know, like absolutely no, 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 no. Me. <laughs> right. That is literally my character. Oh my God. I'm fast yeah, as like. Shit. Oh, I kept uh, getting outrun by everybody. I was just like, what's the point? The what? one point of like monks are fast, and your DM just said "fuck that." Like, nah, nah. <laughs> if you get here, you're gonna solve problems. Oh my god! Like, that's the DM is complicated. Also, you had bullshit. face step. Yeah, you're kidding me. I like, was the shatter kind of monk. monk. <laughs> step of the wind. Face step. When will the Lord give me rest? <laughs> but for the drama. Uh, see, it's so it's so easy to manufacture drama within your characters if you just put in like a modicum of effort, but instead you just decide to make people fast. Come on. She uh, was see, in armor with the shield and a mace. I was literally in a gi and slippers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh like, my god. Easy See, to turn. <laughs> I so I recently ran a game uh I are, have you all played the game Sleep Away? Uh, no. I have heard good things about it. I have not played it yet. It's a great game. I would suggest I would suggest playing it when we are no longer afflicted uh, with having to stay home and not see anyone in person because it's a very hard, like, in-person game. And I had to do a lot of adapting to get it to be able to be played online. Mm -hmm. However, it's a horror RPG. Uh, 
but with that in mind, and it's GMless, which is very fun. Uh, but with that in mind, I like got all my players together and I was like, hey, spooky stuff happens in here. What are your hard lines on spooky stuff? Like, what do you not like? Because even even if you're playing a grim dark game or a horror game, that doesn't mean that you can't have fucking lines and like things that you're just not gonna do. Like you can still make the game an enjoyable experience. Like I think one person really didn't like spiders. And so I was like, yeah, okay, spiders aren't here. They don't exist in this world kind of thing. It's not, <laughs> it's not that hard. It really isn't. Oh, oh yeah, man. I, this, there's nothing better to me than, and this is gonna, this is a real, this is a real douchebag statement, but if I have to have a GM that is either new or doesn't know what they're doing, uh, I find that it's a much more enjoyable uh, experience for me if they're trying to do a hard game <laughs> because there's nothing that hits harder than when they're just like, and the spooky thing happens and it's not spooky. <laughs> Nope. Like I'll I'll still give like the oh man but ah. it's still like a, like inside I'm like this fucking guy <laughs> he's trying bless I, know, I give it hey now, hey, now. <laughs> oh my god I love that oh uh, uh. I, I I love TTRPGs because I swear if you if you play enough of them with your friends you have like war stories <laughs> like <laughs> like Absolutely. in and out of the game oh my god yes uh, it, is this the three kobolds in a trench coat uh, love fest is that what we're going on now ah uh, yes uh, that's a uh, Cal well, in chat uh, he that's his game it is a fantastic we game. played the game on this channel uh, like just Did after you? it came out. <laughs> Oh so, my god, no, he was telling me about that because I was going to play it two weeks later and he was like, someone beat you. And I was like, ow! <laughs> Twas us! Um, Anita, my friend? Yes? Could you please tell me the name of my goblet again? I forgot. Your kobold? Uh, your kobold oh, my was kobold. Uh, his royal majesty holiness, Sir Dr. Bebop, Scallywop, Steve Perry, Esquire the Third, Junior, Junior, Junior of Chicago. <laughs> See, I think one of mine was called log <laughs> so the running gag throughout this we have a highlight of this is noir kept changing his name throughout the entire game so something would happen in the game and the name would have to change because i'd mentioned something like you feast like king so now i'm royalty i was blessed by chat during the break so now i am his royal majesty pope. holiness <laughs> Oh, so good. I'm a Cobo Pope. So Cobo Pope. Oh, uh, oh. Now I remember. Yeah. Oh, Serenity's character was called Styrofoam Cup. Another character <coughs> was called Brick. Yeah. We had we had some fun some fun situations. So what did your kobolds have to get into? Uh, they had to break into a club, because uh, yeah. one of them was a rapper, uh, a freestyle rapping kobold. And um, so they had Very to break into good. the club because uh, they were not on the guest list, despite the fact that they were one of the main performing acts. I and love that. So we had uh, oh, Barnes and Thobel, uh, Samson Sparkle Rocks, and His Royal Majesty Holiness, Sir Dr. Bebop Scallywag, Steve Perry, Esquire the Third, Junior, Junior, Junior of Chicago. It's very important I'm to very note that any time that you think that there is an S in those names, there is, in fact, a Z or a Z. Good, 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 good. My That's, God. I I have no idea how they remember that name, because I don't. As I oh, had to repeat it so 30 times on stream. That'll do it for you. That'll and, do it. And I had to change the overlay. And, it got and I had to keep updating the overlay. <laughs> so Bless you. By the end, the name stretched across the entire stream. <laughs> Goddamn right it did. That is uh, so good. Faye has a question here. Uh, what do y'all think of character players in relationships that bleed into game and kind of mess with things? Uh, so are you talking about like uh, there's a couple that are dating and they're playing a TTRPG and that's kind of fucking up the chemistry of the, of the table? Because I think we've all experienced that. <laughs> 
See, actually, I've had the blessing of not having to experience that. Oh, but it's bad. <laughs> I I have to say, I am now in a campaign with uh, my partner, and um, we had a situation where, when we started getting more serious, I was like, "I can't be, I can't be that bitch. I can't be that bitch. I can't do it." Uh, <laughs> and so so afraid um that i will be monopolizing time but thankfully no horror stories but i'd love to hear yours <laughs> okay um so i was in a game where uh i played with someone who was dating the gm oh yeah oh yeah and you could tell <laughs> you you could sit at the table and not know any of us. And just watch the game play out and go, oh, they're mm -hmm. dating. Oh, God. Like, advantage for the silliest reasons. No. Uh, <laughs> here's, here's the most flagrant. Here's the most flagrant. And Bye, Shelby. You... you they would hit on a 14, right? We would miss on an 18. I'm sorry, excuse me? <laughs> she would hit on a 14. We would miss on an 18. Well, that's because uh, that's because her character caught them flat-footed and like, how? She's a ranger. It makes sense. <laughs> It can't. Yeah, so it's uh it was it was very very obnoxious. Um I do not understand that. And it was just it was just a bunch of shenanigannery that got real uncomfortable. And we we ended up having to have a conversation about it, which I mean, that's I I feel like that's why you either find people that are really reasonable in the TTRPG community or they're really shitty. There's kind of like no middle ground <laughs> mm -hmm. because a, a lot of times in TTRPG there are there are times where people are doing things that they don't realize are harmful or obnoxious or sucky and you can't continue to tell a story if it keeps happening <laughs> like mm -hmm. at some point it's going to get to the point where somebody is building up enough resentment where they just pop <laughs> yep. so if you don't want that pop to happen the rest of the table has to come it has to go okay look we need to talk because you don't realize it but steve's getting ready to murder you <laughs> Steve is gonna bust. <laughs> Every uh, day Steve does push-ups just get <laughs> buff to fuck you up. So you gotta knock it off. He um, says they've dealt with two. The first one, uh, their characters hated each other uh, and were just fucking awful to each other for no reason. They broke up and then things got worse somehow. Oh my god. Uh, second one, I told them I wasn't comfy with having a couple in games, and they said it was fine. Spent half the time making overly sexual com comments, which Ugh. they, as a, as a sweet little ace bean goblet, said nah. Yeah, <sighs> no way. No and, way. And oh my god. have not, they have not DM'd since. That is literally the reason that I have a soft personal line about being in relationships in game with PCs. <laughs> like it takes so much for me, my PC to enter into an in-game relationship with another PC because I'm like, that's just dangerous. If I'm doing it with a DM with one of their NPCs, I feel like there's a level of removal because they're playing like 30 characters. Uh, but literally for that reason, like I don't want the comments to get creepy. I don't want, yeah. it's just, who you got to be careful. Uh, I I say it's a soft line because in my home game, I recently have started like uh, letting that slide a little bit because in my home game, I've been playing it for about a year and a half now. Uh, and the other character that I am playing it with is run by a dude who is heavily gay. 
So there's no like <laughs> leading out into the world of being like, but I'm also into you. And it's like, no, no, there's nothing yeah. here. Our characters are just dumbasses. Yeah. So um, one of my characters that I play with uh, in the game that uh, Noir GMs, I'm in a relationship with another PC in the party. Mm -hmm. um, but D and I have played in multiple games over multiple campaigns and multiple streams together. So we know each other's tempo and we know each other's like give and take so that we can actually do that uh yeah it's like we are both secure enough that we know okay we can flirt in game but it's not going to go past that yeah i i feel i feel like something that and i i feel like i want to start to do this in streams that i run um i feel like Actual plays that do allow for PC, PC romance should should film the, com not the conversation, but should film the work that goes into setting that up. I feel like mm -hmm. one of the things that, because Critical Role is a lot of people's gateway drugs into TTRPGs and like the, the you know, the Percy and Vex, I always Vex, think Vexalia. The Percy and Vex relationship looks fun, and the Keyleth and the other one relationship looks fun. And you don't you don't see the work that goes into like, okay, we're going to do this, but like here are the here are the lines, here are the boundaries, here are how we make this not awkward for everybody at the table. You know, yeah, it's discussions just, happen. Yes, you, you've got to have those conversations. And I think a lot of people just watch Critical Role and go, I want PC romance too. And like, and they just kind of, I, I have, I can't count the amount of times where I have seen guys try to initiate PC, PC romance with them presenting individuals without talking to them about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Faye just said, I also had a DM that made an NPC into my character when realized that I wasn't, th that wasn't an option, brought someone else in and removed them from the game. What? What? Yeah. I hate that. that I, I hate that. The thing that I don't think a lot of people realize with Critical Role is the Percy and Vex story almost didn't happen because Taliesin and Laura wouldn't talk to each other. Uh-huh. Interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, I have not watched a single up. I know, I know the names. I know the characters. Have not watched a single episode of Critical Role. Uh, so whenever anyone <laughs> talks about it, it is endlessly interesting to me because I have no context for it. So I'm like, <laughs> it feels like I'm listening in on tea that I shouldn't be listening in on, even though it is really available for everyone. Uh, <laughs> So that's so interesting. And so they wouldn't communicate, and that's why it almost yeah, didn't happen. They, they, they. At one point, Laura said, "Callison, better make a move soon because I'm going to start exploring other avenues with NPCs." Because Amazing. they wouldn't talk to each other like off outside of character to like actually get the ball rolling on certain things that need to happen. Right. So. Yeah, and. A lot of people are very much like they seem to have this purist view of of like TTRPGs where it's like everything has to happen at the table. It has to happen organically. But like especially when you're doing not so much in like home games, but I still think it's a good rule in home games. But especially if you're like creating something for other people to watch it's good to have those outside conversations and like plan some story beats. I think there's yes. nothing wrong with that. I, I have no problem. And it helps your GM too. Like, fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 one of the most frustrating things is just like having a player who's at your table, who's clearly not having a good time. And you could tell that they want something. They want like a story beat and they give you, nothing like you know you you know we need to normalize coming up to your dm after the session to go i had a few ideas this would be really cool for my character this would be really cool for my character i guarantee you well I, i'm not gonna say i guarantee you because there are a lot of different gms and not sure. all of them are good ones but i m a lot of dms would be appreciative of that it's just like oh cool i didn't think of that and now i can weave it into my story yep yep the amount of times that I've gone to one of my DMs, I have 
two different DMs for like streamed games. And one of them I go to and I'm like, this would be a terrible idea if you did it. Just while making like full eye contact with them. And they're like, <laughs> yes, of course, a terrible idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would hate if this were to happen to me. I would hate it. Oh, uh, this would make me cry. I would be so sad. <laughs> Crying on stream, there not are me. Daggers. It would be a shame if I turned my back and some of them would be, pl would be plunged into my flesh. <laughs> oh no, look, a gun. I think Chekhov put it here. I guess we have to use it. <laughs> uh, no, and then my other DM, I just send him thousands of words of shit and he's like, cool. I'm going to destroy <laughs> you with this. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am that player, and so I make sure that I let my DMs know that, uh, and then they're like, good, go with God. Uh, I am, I'm, the type of player I am is that before session zero, I have two sentences hastily scrawled on a napkin with a question mark, and then three sessions in, I come in and I'm like, I have everything for you, because I cannot come up with a backstory to save my life until I know who I'm playing, uh. But I, I'm sure that I'm sure that that would be infuriating for some DMs. Uh, but I thankfully have found some who are cool with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what Noir does for prep is he has this Philoda five four three two one, which nice. is uh, like five core concepts about your character. Four. What is it? Four. Oh, I can't remember this off the spot. Oh, but I do have access to the file, so we're gonna do that real quick. So. Uh, Five, write five important concepts that are developmental or integral uh, to your character. This could be personality, impactful life events, physical characteristics, sentimental items. Four, write up to four goals you'd like to see throughout the campaign. Please include a mix of both character-driven and player-driven. Three, create three NPCs that are important to your character. Two must be friendly and familiar to your character. The other should be adversarial. Two, create two secrets that your uh, for your character. One is a secret your character knows and the other involves them, but they are unaware. And one, develop one reason why you're going on this adventure. This is what connects you to the other characters and acts as an investment toward the completion of the story. I love that secrets question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as a GM? I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, the amount of like plot hooks that I put in my backstory that I'm like, they don't know the answer to this question mm, is astronomical. I love being hurt in game. I love it. And Maybe. as a G, as a GM, you will, you will be amazed by the amount of times where if you do have your players fill that out, where their secret, like one person's secret goes perfectly with another person's mm. secret. And it's just like, oh, I'm going to ruin you both. <laughs> uh, bless. Mm, no, 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 no. Uh, I have a uh, very personal recent experience with that that I can't speak too uh, plainly about on stream because it is part of a streamed game. Okay. Uh, but it's a secret that my character is keeping about a place that she has lived. And I have realized very recently, she's extremely old. Uh, I've realized very recently that she lived in the same place as another character for that character's entire life. <laughs> and she's just not telling them. And it is gorgeous. And uh, <laughs> I personally know that he is not here, so he won't get that spoiler. Uh, and anyone who watches that game who's in this chat, shh. <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to give any more details than that. But yeah. The kind of thing where, like, I did not intend for that secret to line up. I found in game that he was from there in the game. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, uh, so I, I, I just, I love, secondary. I, I, oh, Pisces. now it's Pisces? Yeah, Pisces. Hello, Pisces. <laughs> I just one. I love when when you can play a character with a secret and the rest of the table does it again we keep edging towards the that guy section and I, I promise I'm not trying to but I have been in so many games where I've tried to have a secret 
we're, you know, me and the DM know what's going on, and we're going to develop towards it for a big reveal. And there's this one character that suddenly tries to become Sherlock and uses all sorts of meta knowledge to just fuck my moment. Like, I just, right. I, <laughs> just stop, dude. <laughs> just stop. Oh, but yeah. Let me have so, my moment. Let, let me have this. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we need some chats. What? Just oh, thought of a secret ooh. for a character. We need to have some chats. Oh. <gasps> oh. I know what character you're talking about. Uh, Pisces does not have a stream command, but I should probably make an exclamation point, Cato. Wow, so clearly you love one of your cats more than the other. Ash shows okay. up more. <laughs> Pisces is rare. You got a rare cat? A shiny cat, as it yes. were? Oh my god. <laughs> he usually sleeps in the bedroom. Doesn't come over. People I... need to appreciate how fun it is to know a thing as a player and do dumb shit as the character because they don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, there there's still a subsect of players that try to win D D is the problem. Mm -hmm. And you can't explain to these people that there is no winning D. &D. Nope. When you try to win, that's when you lose. Uh, Pretty much. It's really the only way to lose. I mean, mm -hmm. e even if you are, like, even if you die in D&D, &D, if you die while telling a good story, that's still a win to me. Yeah. <laughs> but if you just die on some dumb murder hobo shit, like, I don't know, attacking somebody who is in a store called Mickey, Mar Mickey Markle's Magic Mimic Makery, then you deserve what happens to you. Yep. Yeah, that store's gonna explode, and it's your fault. <laughs> oh my god, I uh, I personally I don't understand. Uh, like I get that everyone enjoys playing different things, et cetera, et cetera. But I personally just love making stupid ass decisions. I love yes. it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I I I I uh, I'm playing a barbarian that constantly makes stupid decisions like i just decided i'm gonna 1v1 strahd at level like seven because why not Good. why not <laughs> come at me strahd i mean he doesn't know that strahd is probably like a much higher level I, he yeah. just thinks this this weird goth dude keeps fucking shit up so i'm about to give him the pulse <laughs> Good. yes <laughs> And that is oh. the true type of like non meta game shit because like you as a player are familiar with the curse of Strahd and are like, oh, yeah. this man will kill me. Yeah. Uh, but not as a not as a PC. I'm a fucking Goliath barbarian cleric of death. Who am I scared of? Everyone Nobody. behave, my DMs in the chat. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Everybody act normal. Ah, ah, I wasn't talking about your campaign. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, <laughs> but no, I love that. Oh my god. There's nothing better than when you're like you get along with your GM because I've played in so many games where I like me and the GM we just don't see eye to eye, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it is the worst. Uh, I, think I mean. I know okay. that this is not going to come across uh, super genuine because he is in chat right now. Uh, but Sean is one of the best DMs to ever exist. I love him with my whole heart. And oh. I will fight him one day in hand to hand combat. I will. Uh, uh oh. Has been lurking. This Says, whole time. I've been lurking. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! Well, welcome. Uh. Mr. Shika Dance. <laughs> yeah, that's my DM. His All right, name is question. Sean. Favorite line to say to Strahd, for example, you are just basic, but we can help if you want. My character, Magic Bean, Penny said. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I think we've been at this for a while, so we're gonna, we can queue up break soon, but that is a great question to uh, lead us into break, which is, what is the coolest quote a character of yours has ever said in a game. Oh God, I'm terrible at remembering these. I'm, I'm also terrible. You go at first if you have one. Yeah. Uh, Anita, you go first. Oh God. Uh, pass the buck. Pass the buck. Uh, shoot. Mm. Uh, Yana's had some pretty good lines. I have a... 
Nice. Oh, go for it. If you've thought of something, I'm trying to think of something. I have a recent one that's not, like, super good, uh, but it was one that I was just happy with because it came in the blink of the moment. Um, my paladin uh, in Sean's game had uh, recently succumbed to some phase spiders, which paralyze you. Uh, and she was feeling some kind of bad about herself and just needed to fight some baddies to feel like she was actually a big, strong paladin. Uh, and she was in the middle of combating this guy and like rolled a nat one to knock him out, essentially. And so one of the other players was like, hey, Riss, do you need some help with that? And she was like, if you take this man out, I will come over and kill you myself. And it was just like, <laughs> ah, I said that line. And I was like, where did that come from? Oh my God, she's so angry. Uh, that was just a line that I personally enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. You know, I love those moments though when like the character just so clearly comes to life that they speak and you have to take a second to go oh shit oh okay <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you got anything Anita? Uh, I think the one that stands out to me with the Yenna was the Yenna is uh, was a warlock at the time is now a paladin um uh, I think it was, uh, um, you were shown mercy, so you show mercy. Mm. I, I show mercy because I was shown mercy. Okay. Oh, that's delicious. Um, I think I have to go back to, uh, my Shatter Kai monk, which... Uh, that we had a player that was possessed by something evil or we thought he was possessed by something evil. And, uh, you know, we, he was, we had fought him and we had finally subdued him. And the party is just trying to figure out a way to free, um, to free uh, our party member from this control. And, uh, you know, the monk, my monk goes, you know, we've tried everything, punch, stabbing, perhaps fire. <laughs> like, and that became his solution for everything. Like, everybody's like, we need to find or restore the spell. We need to, you know, like, try healing magic. Perhaps fire? <laughs> like have, the, have you considered maybe? fire? Have you considered <laughs> violence on this day? <laughs> uh, perhaps fire. Because I would have set him on fire. <laughs> you really would have, Should have. Andar. I would have loved to hear it. <laughs> Burn your Let's dead see. kids, Zia. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, I see you and I are on the same wavelength there, Nick. Uh, let's see. Uh, my paladin was getting ready to duel a deadly foe, and the party was offering him assistance. His BFF apologized for having nothing to give him, and he replied, you're giving me a reason to fight. Oh, adorable. Oh, adorable. and Super Deal and Stardust one shot her NPC, uh, which says, I just wanted a husband that I could eat after. And my Morgana, the mean, responded, Technically, all husbands are husbands <laughs> you can eat when you're done with them. <laughs> <Really good. laughs> Another one that Nick uh, went, came up with this one time, a queen said her daughter's unborn child needed a father fi figure. My lesbian fuckboy bard said, some people call me daddy. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. I, I I just want a fucking thread of these. <laughs> like, I'm, so I'm like, I'm, I'm like, make this a Twitter thing. Uh, we were exploring a step, uh, stepped pyramid, and I kept asking the GM if it was on fire. When they reassured me it wasn't, my character reassured the group we were safe because smoking cigarettes can kill you. Okay, yes. we're going. We're Good. no, no, no. <laughs> we, we don't we 15, award that. Fifteen kind of, points. <laughs> we don't award that kind of behavior. God. You ever just read something that fucks your day up? <laughs> In a lasers and feelings game recently, my madman engineer just said, just take care of yourself. It's called self-love, not self-ask all the time. <laughs> that, that's a cool-ass shirt. Uh, all right. We're gonna I, I, I think... 
I think that's the perfect point for us to go on break. I need more coffee. Uh, Same. And we we also need to get into the that guy section because we've been dancing around it for the last hour and a half. So we're going to come back with that. Uh, and we'll be reading off some more of your cool ass character quotes. So while we're on break, keep giving them to us. All right. Bye. And we're back. Oh. Hello. Ah. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Pretty simple. <laughs> that, 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 just like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is what happens when I have too much coffee. All right. So uh, I feel like we have been dancing around my favorite segment of this show for the last couple of hours, for the last hour. So I think we should just jump on into it. And that go. for the uninitiated is the that guy segment of our show. Now, for those who of you who don't know what a that guy is, if you had the pleasure of being, if, if you've had the experience of being at a TTRPG table uh, and there is just a black hole of fun, uh, someone whose very presence brings you down and if they were yeeted into the sun, your enjoyment of the game would uh, increase exponentially, uh, I have bad news for you. You have experienced the that guy. Now, thanks to this show, we are aware that that guys come in. Nope, don't like the way that sounds. That we, <laughs> we we are aware that there are many different bad guys uh, of different uh, severities and, and different levels. Uh, we, as an in example, fact, we are compiling them into a bestiary of that guys. Yes, we are making a that guy monster manual, how to identify and <laughs> destroy the that guy at your table. Um, and uh, shout out to Alien for uh, designing a dope cover for us. Um, uh, so th that is a project that we're working on. Uh, again, to show you the different levels of that guys that we've had. We've had biters, mm -hmm. uh, people that have bit people. Uh, we've got the traditional railroaders. Uh, we've got people who try to make their players fall in love with them using romanceable characters. So, that being said, Sarah is coffee. What is your that guy? <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like I need to preface this by saying, although I did not get into TTRPGs by DMing, I did get into D&D &D by DMing first. Uh, so this occurred while I was the DM. Okay. Uh, there was a certain gentleman at my table who would play this character who was a female lesbian barbarian. And the reason that he played a female lesbian barbarian was so that he could get drunk at the table and hit on all the femme presenting people at the table and then be like, but she's a woman, so it's okay. <laughs> and I became so angry and the issue the reason that this was such an issue was because he was interested in these people in real life uh but i had drawn a very hard line of like uh these people aren't interested in you so you cannot flirt with them uh at the table because what had pre previously happening was he was just hitting on people at the table so i was like you can't do that at my table i'm sorry dude it's not gonna happen so he created a character that would hit on their characters on the table and i was like no uh so i kicked him out of my game and his character <laughs> ungracefully fell down the steps and died at a uh in a city cow <laughs> because no 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 lesbiantics uh, Lesbiantics, really? absolutely. This feels like an evolution of the that's what my character would do. Uh-huh. It just hearing this story, you've made me realize I had that exact same I had a paladin barbarian that was played by a murder hobo. 
that was also a lesbian and did the very same, not played by a lesbian, like the character was a lesbian, played by a murder right, right, homo right. dude. And uh, yeah, I just realized that they did the same thing. Uh -huh. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. there, baby. It exists. I love, yeah, and like, I mean, hate to see it. <sighs> Don't get me wrong. I love playing horny characters. I'm not going to lie. I think it's very fun. Uh, <laughs> however, boundaries, people. Boundaries. Uh, yes. And if you cross over those, I will not hesitate to bring the hammer of justice down upon you. <laughs> no. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. And it was, it was even worse. It was even worse because I actually had dated this person before. And so Oof. there was like that extra, like, no, don't, don't bring this shit around my table. I know what you're like, get out of here. Uh, so we, we did not tolerate that even a little bit. Uh, oh, and thank you. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's, it's gone, baby. Wow. Sammy, uh, wow. I will give you permission to post a link. So just give me one second. I just saw someone in chat said that they had the reverse of a cis woman playing a gay man doing the same thing. Fetishization in any capacity. Disgusting. Yeah. Wrecked. Get out of here. I, uh, you know, you know what? I very wow. I very early in my D and D career, I, I I noticed that this is becoming a trick. Like this, I love the bad guy section because it makes me look back on my D and D history and go, ugh. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of times where people would play over exaggerated gay characters for laughs. Mm -hmm. And just looking back on it, I'm just like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> like, I'm just, ugh. It wasn't a link. Uh, Night thought, God. Night thought you are drunk. <laughs> no drunk. Uh, <laughs> I I had an experience personally uh, where before I realized that I was the big gay, I created a, a male character who was gay, and I was like, "Am I just doing this for laughs? Am I doing it for the fetishization?" And then, like three months in, I was like, "Oh no, I'm gay," <laughs> <laughs> which was a fun little revelation for me. <laughs> I have heard oh. that so many times, though. <laughs> like, and that's again, that's the other magic of TTRPG. <laughs> It's just like it really makes you look at what you're working out with your character creation. Yeah. <laughs> my, just having no idea. My pet. <laughs> oh, what do you mean, my lesbian disaster space captain? No, yeah, I am gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there it is. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. I play oh, a thirsty man. bard. Yes, yes, all the tropes, but I always ask the GM ahead of time if I can flirt with NPCs. I take no for an answer. Don't even flirt with my own girlfriend's PCs without permission. Mm, yeah, yes. like you're supposed to. <laughs> oh no, I got clipped. Uh, <laughs> um, so true. Uh, uh, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. On the flip side, I can I can tell you it also confirms if your cisness. Like you know, I've I've played I've played a a, a fem presented character before. It's just like I did the romance with uh with another guy. I'm just like that was fine. Yeah, I'm straight. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, but I. Eh. <laughs> yeah. I had a good time. Now I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I absorbed that avenue. Uh, and I mean, hey, that's healthy as hell. Exactly. You know, <laughs> like just taking the time to be like, would this be? No. But that was fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it was super hot though. Respecting boundaries. Mm, so hot. Oh my Not god. Hot. Making sure there's consent at the table. Ooh, baby. Uh, that's why I, one of the things, if you're ever in a campaign with me and a lot of the people that, I, I hope the people uh, that I've played D&D 5th edition with can vouch for this, is I am very cautious with charm magic because mm -hmm. I have had, I, I had the experience and I've, I've talked about this before so I'm not going to go too much into into depth about it but I had a GM who had an experience where they were assaulted and the way they got over it was they 
pretty much wrote an adventure about it. And Ooh. and charm was a huge part of that. And it presented that magic in a way where you really where it hit. <laughs> it, it, and it was very uncomfortable, but that was the point. That was the story that they were telling. And uh ever since I'm just like Charm, Charm person has limits. <laughs> Charm person has a whole lot of limits. And you know what? Don't you, you might not even want to grab that spell because I am uh-huh. very mm, with it. Just nope. <laughs> like, like there are things in D and D that like scare me. <laughs> like you know, like mm-hmm. uh, Strahd will Strahd will never scare me. Look, I, mm-hmm. I, as as badass as I know he is, to me he he's just a hot topic punk. Like a Tarrasque will never scare me. A dragon will scare me because I've read a lot about them. But nothing terrifies me more than enchantment magic. Mm-hmm. No, nothing so scary as a DM that you are not familiar sit with saying. So they cast suggestion. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh no, 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 oh, no, boy. no, 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 no. <laughs> One of the things that I hate the most in the Dungeon Master's Guide is where they openly suggest that you use Gaius as a plot hook. Yeah. 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 That spell. Yikes. That is, I, I So like there are spells that are like tagged as evil, tagged as good, and then there's just like your neutral spells. And it drives me crazy that Gaius or Guys or however you say it is not tagged as like one of those evil spells. You can make someone have to do something for their entire life and they take psychic damage if they don't do it or resist. How yeah. is that not evil? <laughs> like, Ugh, just... It's so bad. 100%. I, uh, the only two uses that I have ever seen Gaius and be comfortable with it, one is with a character of my own and one is with a character that I watched be, being played. They're uh, plugging a very famous podcast, NADPod, <laughs> um, uh, where like they needed someone to be able to resist something and that person wanted to resist it but wasn't sure they'd be strong enough. So someone said, do you want me to cast Gaius on you so it's easier? And that person was like, yes, please. Consent. Hey. Uh, Yo, like and... using Gaius to like stop smoking? That's fucking yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun. Like they were gonna, they had to be the ruler of hell and they didn't want to get corrupted by hell. So they were like, hey, you want me to like cast Gaius on you so that you're like trying actively to not be corrupted by hell? And they were like, yes, please. I would like that. Give that to uh, me. Yeah, so good. Um, I like that. I like that. That's clever. That's right? Awesome dangerous but clever i mean that's you how will, you should be using gay you would feel the second you're starting to get corrupted because that psychic damage would be like hey Can't <laughs> stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's just the, it's the equivalent of a rolled up newspaper on your snoot it's, a, it's exactly. the equivalent of like having the rubber band that you yeah. flick yourself with whenever you're doing something like you shouldn't be doing mm-hmm. oh, oh i so love good. that yeah, you have yeah. to re-update, re-up it every 30 days or something yeah, like it's that. Yeah, every, it's every 30 days or something like that, yeah. Isn't mm-hmm. there a way that it's permanent? I, 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 I think if you cast it at, like, an insanely high level, it goes yeah. for a really long time. Um, now, the other one, I don't necessarily think that this is a good one, but I understand. Um, my character is up against a very evil person that posed himself as her father for many years, uh, and use that to justify some truly heinous and horrendous shit and is now trying to essentially take over the world. He's a bitch. Um, and she wants to cast chaos on him to make him have to apologize for every shitty thing that he's ever done in his life. And do I think that's healthy? No. I'm not sure if she's actually going to do that when push comes to shove. But it's really what she wants to do. Uh, but but I'd that like said, to have it as an option. Exactly. That said, like suggestion, chaos, charm, command, hold person. I am very careful with that shit in my games. Ooh, hold person is a, like like I, I as a GM, I think it's healthy and maybe a little unhealthy to like. Take a look at the spell, the spells in D and D fifth edition, and just like 
read them and for like one moment imagine being on the business end of that spell like mm-hmm. ah! <laughs> whole person is terrifying you cannot move and you are you acutely move. aware of everything that's happening around you and, yeah. and you can feel it yeah yeah it, it's a it's a trigger yep. for some people yeah uh, yeah I, it's icky. <laughs> dominate Oof. monster mm-hmm same Mm-mm. not good no. and there's a do- there's another thing of that that's dominate person uh yeah. which no it's icky. <laughs> it's uh, one of those o- things that you really oh yeah go ahead oh no go ahead go ahead i just feel like you have to balance like i would never use those spells on a mid-level evil baddie. The only time that I consider those spells is like when someone is so unspeakably evil that I'm like, we are going to kill you. And and you are, you. it needs to happen. And if I need to stop you from leaving so that happens, okay. But if it's just like a dude who's kind of shitty, like you have someone pickpocket you, I am not gonna hold that person. No, I mean, <laughs> no way. I I first there's only one use of Gaius that I've ever seen that I was just like, okay, I'm okay with this. Uh mm-hmm. and it was a necromancer was doing some fuckity fuck shit as they're wont to do. Um uh, necromancy in and of itself isn't that bad, but this person was doing some reckless shit with me. Uh and so Gaius was cast on them. Anytime they tried to do any necromancy, whap. I was nice. okay with that. It was just That's very funny. You had something, you fuck you, you you fucked with it, and now you can't do it anymore. That's fair. Amazing. Um uh but there there was one the most okay, so my most uncomfortable experience with hold person. <laughs> I was a GM and I was a I was a new GM. And just just thugs, just bandits on the road doing bandit shit ran into my party, which had two murder hobos. <laughs> and the bandit chief got held person and the barbarian intimidated before attacking. And the intimidation was while this person's held, just putting the axe at their neck, just like, okay, let me make sure I get this right. And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> I Uncomfortable. Don't like this. I'm like, I kind of feel like at that point, you're the bad guy. It was like yeah. you wiped out his friends. He's held in place. The battle is over and you're taking a practice. Like you're, doing measurements on cutting his right. head off like oh, that's that's God, an alignment that's, that's that's an alignment shift for sure mm-hmm. uh-huh. and a that conversation dude. after the tape or after the uh, session mm-hmm. and Are it's we, like it's those, <laughs> oh, the bad guys? Uh, the, those low level characters those low level baddies that you come at the reason that it, i feel like it's uncomfortable is that like a certain level of like moral deviance you have to ask yourself the question like why are they doing this what and and if the reason is like a little like they have like a jean valjean trying to feed their family kind of thing and it's just like you just did unspeakable evil to someone who's trying to like sustain their life (laughs) and that's kind of why i like throwing like every now and then i'll throw an encounter at my players that they are way over level for just mm-hmm. as a moral check just to see like clearly Stretch. what's starting shit with you can't be- oh okay here we go clearly what oh my back popped i know it feels oh. so good oh <laughs> i forgot everything i was about to say right now um, <laughs> oh okay um but yeah clearly whatever's facing you right now can't beat you so let's see if you exercise mercy it's sadly more times than not nope Nope. they just use it as a chance to be badass to show off their spells and abilities i uh... hurtful uh 
I did see a chat that said it's fun to fight off whole person to try to kiss a boy. And yes, I do acknowledge that that is something that I, I did in a campaign <laughs> once where I had a cast person, whole person cast on me. And I said, but I do want to kiss him. Can I fight it? And my DM said, that's fucking great. Do it. Uh, so I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Why that. was the whole person cast on you again? Oh, it was very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with, with TTRPG players where they're just like this broke my heart <laughs> it was so sad <laughs> um, no uh, my player uh, this was my sweet sweet barbarian who had a five intelligence um, who was in love with someone from his hometown and he and this guy uh, were it was his only friend for all of his life, uh, the only one who defended him when he was like an asshole accidentally because he would like fly into rages and like destroy things or hurt people. But then he did a really bad one and had to run away. And so this guy like came after him to try to like save him. Uh, but he had to become a traitor to his own people to save my character. Oh. And so they had this like final confrontation moment where neither of them had admitted that they loved each other. And he handed my character a note. My character was like, I can't read. And he was like, someday you'll be able to read it. I hope. And he cast whole person to run away because my character would not have let him run away. And my character was like, no, this is like the last moment that he might ever see him. I want him to kiss that boy. And my DM said, yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, and then he jumped off a cliff into the waters below and my character never saw him again. I know he's alive, I, but- I think I've seen the TikTok of this. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the TikTok of this. <laughs> this is so sad. Uh, I'll get good. strong Steven, uh, Steven Bucky vibes here. How dare you come for my OTP? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about how much fan fiction I've read for Stucky. I don't want to talk about it. Trust me, I've, I've probably heard it all. My sister is an avid Stucky fan. <laughs> mm. Mm. So good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Fireball uh, is the answer to everything. Fireball uh, can't mean the broken heart. <laughs> this started, this started it can with, burn it up. But... Uh, this is why I play martial classes, because uh, then I can do non-lethal damage. It's very hard to cast a non-lethal high-level shatter. Uh, do you mean you can't non-lethally fireball someone? It's just a flaming goose ball. <laughs> It's so good. Oh my god. Yeah, there is a rule in one of my campaigns that if it's magic damage, it's not non-lethal. And I respect that because, like, you can't make your sword shine with flaming brilliance and be like, this won't kill you! <laughs> <laughs> this smite that I'm putting into the sword is not lethal! <laughs> no, it's no, that's not how that works. You're uh, aiming to kill there, bud. <laughs> oh, you're a stucky shipper? No wonder you're crunch crew. Uh, you know what? We need to do a study to see if there's any correlation. <laughs> I gotta leave. If, if you're a stucky fan, you're 85% more likely to be crunch crew. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, fuck. So you, good. I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, uh, I'm personally not a Stucky fan, mm -hmm. um, but after being lectured by my sister about it, I do feel that the ending of Endgame was bullshit. <laughs> I, I, you know, if if my sister had her way, uh, Steve would have escaped with Bucky and they would have lived happily ever after. But the fact that he just kind of ditched Bucky is bullshit. Like, I, uh... It is. And not even, oh no, you're getting me on some shit. Oh no. <laughs> I <laughs> found the Stucky trigger. <laughs> this actually, this actually goes very heavily into uh, my, I, my theories on like alternate universes, time shit, uh, the charm spell, I feel like, figures into this because Steve 
we know that he's a good guy, right? Mm -hmm. They have yeah. shown through multiple movies that Steve is a good guy. Yep. And Steve sees that Peggy has gone on with her life, found somebody that she loves and settled down with them. And he goes, no, 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 no. I'm just gonna ruin that. And I don't think I can forgive the writers for that. Like, come on, Steve would not do that shit. My guess Steve is- Steve would not. Maybe he mm. just shared a dance with her and then said, you know what, Maybe. I'm okay. You can go on with your life. I'll go on with They mine. showed a wedding ring though. It doesn't necessarily have to be Peggy, though. That's true. Well, the other thing is, like... I'm gonna accept this headcanon for my own sanity. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, though, and yeah, we're, we're stuck in this now, so y'all better hunt, just hold on. The other <laughs> thing is, um, he, he made out with her niece. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's... That's kind of gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you lawful con to... conch or chaotic stucky? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Uh, and that's the thing is that like there's a lot of things that they tried to incorporate from the comics I was a huge Marvel comics nerd as like a teenager um, but and so they were like let's put this in the movie it'll be fine which he does have a relationship with uh, Peggy Carter. Carter's yeah um, yeah Sharon and it's a little weird in the comics but they like take the time to establish it yeah. And also don't play up the whole Peggy and Steve were always meant to be together thing. And it's better. Whereas in the movies, they were like, they're soulmates. So kiss Sharon now. Replacement Peggy. And it's like, Wah! gross. Well, I, I feel like it, it's it's even grosser. Because, oh, okay. It, it, let's, let's, let's really get into this. Uh, let's do it. Captain America, the first adventure. He's with Peggy. They're they're soulmates. It's cool. Winter Soldier, maybe romance with Scarlet, uh, with uh, uh, Black Widow, maybe, maybe. Age mm -hmm. of Ultron, um, Black Widow now with Hulk for reasons. I lost my faith a long time ago. <laughs> so Civil War, Civil War, Cap now with Sharon, like. And can we just say the best part of the Cap Sharon relationship is the Bucky and Falcon and yes. the Beetle? Like, I think that's the best part. That's the only good thing that came from that. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, oh, oh yeah, I'm just upset. I feel like I feel like they did a lot of shitty things to like the character of Captain America in the yeah. uh, in the movies. Specifically, like, they gave Sharon Captain America's most iconic monologue, which I'm yes. like, come on, come yes. on. Yes! Why he's are you supposed to give that to Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to give that to Spider-Man, and that's what makes Spider-Man courageous enough to make the sacrifice and die. That's important. Uh. That's important. <laughs> Oh man, I can't get pulled back. I can't get pulled back. I'm out of comics now. I don't read comics anymore. <laughs> I can't I do have this. I Marvel Universe subscription, so I'm still reading them. Oh boy. Oh uh, my god. Yeah, I had yeah. to. I had to pop myself out of that fandom because, ooh man, uh, if, if D and D is a rough fandom to be in, uh, comics is even worse. Especially if you're. Fan. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I sometimes I miss it. And that's when I read fan fiction. <laughs> I, you know, one of these days I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to walk that dark path and find myself in AO3. One day, maybe. I just like every day when I go to bed, it's just not today, not today. <laughs> Sleep well, you are almost likely going to AO3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i can tell you right now the reason that i don't uh i went uh, uh, so i i dated a fan fiction writer mm -hmm. um uh and uh i i i had to I, I didn't have to but i read one of their works and it was supernatural and dangerous no. Now, Noir, let me ask you something. <laughs> no. Did are we they talking, ship the siblings? Are we talking Wincest yeah. here? No! 
is that Winston. where Dean and Sam are are doing things that yep. brother? Yeah. Yep. We're talking Wincest. <laughs> I I was a Tumblr kid, and I have to tell you that the most arguments that I ever got into with anyone on that site was when anyone did Wincest shit, and I was like, no. Their siblings. They were like, you don't understand what they've been through. And I'm like, no. It's, it's gross. Uh, like, okay. Look, I I didn't think this was going to be a rant. I didn't think this was going to be a rant for today, but here it. we are. Let's I'm go. very uncomfortable with how mainstream incest is getting. I just, I don't like it. You know what? You can call, you can call me old fashioned. You can call me whatever you want, but like can we talk about the fact, and I, Flash is marrying his sister on a TV show. That's like on a TV show. Like, yes, she's adopted or he's adopted, but they're still siblings and he's marrying his sister. It's gross. Like, <laughs> that's a line. I, I just want anyone oh, that yeah. tries to write like incest fan fiction or anything like that to actually sit down with a pair of siblings and see if they can actually get along for like more than three seconds without tearing each other's throats out <sighs> yes and like it especially like hit a weird chord with me because my i'm the youngest of five uh so same. my brother oh same hat same hat same hat, same hat. Uh, the brother that I am closest in age to, we are practically like best friends, so fucking close. Every time I think I thought about Wincest in the context of that sibling relationship that I have, I want to poke my own eyes out. Like, it's so disgusting. It's so disgusting. Ah! Uh, <laughs> same, no. like, yeah, as, uh, and even like, I didn't get along with my the brother that's like in closest in age to me until we were both adults. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, we barely tolerated each other. Yep. Yep. I, I just see chat moving and I'm afraid to look. I know. <laughs> like, I know. Uh, uh, AJ made a mistake in chat. Oh no! What did you What did you do, buddy? Uh, the word <laughs> The words. It depends on which sibling. <laughs> oh, buddy! Oh, buddy! Buddy! <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure that buddy. was a mistake. I don't think that was right, well thought not... out. No. In context. Uh... <laughs> it's okay, AJ. We're, we're okay. You good? You good, buddy? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, <sighs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, AO3 I can be a great place. I may request But it can also now. be such a dark place. And I but, am so sorry that that was your exposure was Wincest. Uh, that was my exposure to AO3 and my exposure to Deviant Art was Sonic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm not a lot. I'm not on Deviant Art a lot. Never was, but uh, yeah. <laughs> a vibe. So uh, but I I heard there are some really good fan fictions out there, and um, I have I have a friend that's tried to get me to read one in particular. I am a huge fan of Devil May Cry. And the problem oh. with Devil May Cry is that they they don't really expand on the lore a lot. And I as I'm as I've been told, fan fiction exists to expand on lore that the writers of TV shows just haven't got around to yet. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm 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 I may I may do it, but not today. But I just that I I read things, I read things that I can never unread. <laughs> same uh there are things yeah. that are so much worse than wincest you are correct absolutely Wait, how can it get worse than two sim you know what don't want to know you don't, don't know. you really don't <laughs> uh i'll just i'll just i'll just hint quietly at some of it by saying um the lines between uh 
what people do and what other things happen get very blurred. AJ, and you that is <laughs> Oh my god, almost fake clips the AJ. AJ, no. Bless. Bless, 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 bless. I, uh, I yeah, that's as far as I'm gonna go. I I legitimately like I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, here, <laughs> uh, here Noir, uh, so we don't say it in on stream. I'm just gonna put the the worst one that I've seen uh, in Ooh. Zoom chat, so that way you can know. How exciting! I mean, there are tags that I don't understand. That, <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Oh, that's a true pull the trigger piglet situation. <laughs> that one. That is the worst one that I've seen. Uh, and um, for me, now maybe this is just a personal ick. <laughs> yeah, that. That one. Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Is it my? My immortal isn't that bad. Like it's bad. It's not but it's my immortal. Cool. It's cringe. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just killed my co-host. It's uh, we're, in, we're we're having a good time, everyone. I'm dead. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll just we'll just say that it involves an anime character and a historical figure. Chat. That yes. is what we will say. That's what we'll mm -hmm. say. Yeah. <laughs> I think I did break. Uh, this is my legacy. I come on morning ritual and Noir gets broken. I can't make it make sense. I can't. I can't. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I would write this. Who? So okay, that went, yep. So the thing about me is, I love art. I love all art, and like when I, I love trying to figure out the process of how art is made, and like you know where how you take a, 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 a an idea and grow it, like bring it into fruition. I don't. I don't want to know anything about the process of this. <laughs> Uh, but I will say that there is time travel involved. Of course. How could you? How could you make it work without it? You can't. Make okay, it work yeah, but time that travel. makes sense because it's established in the lore. Bobo made a time machine. Okay, god damn it! I put it together in my head and I hate it. I hate it. Mm. Man. Mm -hmm. I feel God in this chilies tonight, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> There's your I'm only so hit bad. chat. The only hit you're getting. Oh, and I am ashamed. I did not read the I did not as soon as I read the title of it, I was like <sighs> I walk I stood up and I walked away from my computer. Like that's enough that's enough internet for today. You got to you got to turn off the computer at that point. I'm so so, I'm not even I a just, host right now. <laughs> I apologize. This is all my hostess just went out the duck out the fucking window. Like there's no Gone. professionalism left in me right now. I'm fucking How can cooked. you be? I'm fucking cooked after that. Uh, <laughs> we need a I Thanos. <laughs> uh, this is a deep cut. Uh, so I, I feel like only some people will understand it. So let me. Um, if you've ever listened to the band Neutral Milk Hotel, they did write some questionable songs about this historical figure, uh, which oh really my broke God. my brain when we found that out because I liked those songs and then I found out that they were about that and I was like, hmm. oh my God, time to wash my ears out. We're, I we're not going to explain. We're, we no, will explain we will not no explain. Further. That is as far as we go. Yeah. Oh boy. This is a Wendy's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ma'am. Ma there's like a morbid curiosity that's just like, we gotta read it now. And I'll just yeah. like, no, the fuck we don't. Such <laughs> no, a really quick don't. way to get banned from Twitch. <laughs> no, I'm, I would never read that on <laughs> <Street. laughs> 
Oh my uh, god. Fuck, that's wild. I, I, uh, would, I, I am not divulging this to anyone. Nope. I, I would love to talk to the author just so I can ask them one single question, which is, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Have you considered not? I would just sit down very quietly with them, tent my fingers just like this, and go, are you okay? Is there something in your life happening right now? You know what? Now I've got to. Now I've got to see. If oh I... no, Noir! No, don't, don't. No, I'm not. I'm not so looking much, at. You have so much to live for. I was just. I was just like. You know what? Let's see. I, I was like. I'm. Let, I'm gonna. I want to come up with the craziest idea that I could come up with, and I want to see if it exists. And so I looked up Bible fan fiction. And no. There is. The Bible is fan fiction, if you think about it. That exists. That exists, that, absolutely. Oh my, there's so not much only, of Not it. only is there Bible fan fiction, there's real people fan fiction. And for me, that's too far, baby. I agree. And like, let me take my favorite YouTubers and ship them. Nope. Don't. There's nope. so much. If you stop for a moment to think, maybe I, maybe I should ship these two people that are real people. Maybe I should do that. Just take a, a second, stop, collect yourself, and then just don't do that. Just never. Just nah. Y'all, I You think... want Bible fan fiction, just listen to an evangelical preacher. Yeah. Y'all, yep. I, just, I just saw a Christian Bible slash Pokemon fanfic, and I, 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 <laughs> I think that's it for me. I think... Uh... <laughs> I think I need to find where I can opt out of the human race. <laughs> the Jesus fandom has some really weird AUs. <laughs> Jesus I, coffee I think, shop uh... AU when? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I am, I am, I think I'm done. <laughs> How, you How you doing, Noir? How you feeling? <laughs> You know, I, I I I used to be like, imagination is good. That's what makes TTRPG magic. I love imagine. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes people just need to be stopped. <laughs> this is this is this, we've gone too far. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh we have, God. I want to uh, be the Christ like the no way. <laughs> I wanna be the very Christ. To Christian is my real test. Oh my god. The Bible is my cause. It's my cause. <laughs> <laughs> Every day I think uh. Thanos had a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you thought the show wasn't gonna go off the rails, you were Fully fucking mistaken. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Okay. I, I'm trying to get back in the whole smoke. It's, it's like starting a car that's not going. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god. I believe in you. Wait, you can do Holy. This. I have So faith. if you. If you could play a TTRPG based off any franchise, <laughs> what franchise would you play? Oh, wait, I can't. I'm so fucking. Uh -huh. Why would they write that? <laughs> we got sued. Close. Yeah, we got so close. This is going to be something oh. that I oh randomly God. scream about at three in the morning where I'm just sleeping and I'm just like, fuck ah, why? <laughs> Mm. You can't bring this back. Oh, posture right? check. Thank you. Uh, mm, uh, thank you. Thank you. You know what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you know what I've never seen that I think would be very fun is a TTRPG about like the Victorian era because we already do like vampires and uh, and like werewolves and those are very Victorian things. Like they came very much into vogue in that time. Mm -hmm. 
give me some gentleman jack ass ttrpgs you know <laughs> there's a uh, uh, the... good society which is sort of uh austin is that like the jane austen one yes, jane austen ttrpg <sighs> Oh yes. my god. See, I just need to be drama. Yes, I just need it to be about 50% more gay than that and we're good to go. We're good to go. <laughs> That's good society. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Crank up the gay. <laughs> I have to check that out. I I run a I run a um a show that does different TTRPGs every month and I feel like I just found my next one because I want that. I want that. <laughs> I've heard it's a, I've heard of that it's a very very good um, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's kind. It's kind of. It is kind of the Bridgerton RP, TTRPG. It's. It's called. Good. It's called. What the Good fuck Society. is Bridgerton? I keep hearing about it, know. and I have no <clears throat> idea what the hell it is. All I know is that my Bridgerton name is. Uh, I forget. It's like the some your first name or your middle name, the last thing that you drank, with ton at the end, and. Oh no! And then like the first I'm... part of your street, and then you add Brooke to the end. Okay. Wait. Okay, let me. That's find like this. three names, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a. It's a book series. Okay, what's and the a last part on Netflix? Uh, Lynn. Last... So my middle name is Lynn. I just had T. So Lynn Teton, which is terrible. Uh... Here we go. What Wait. is your Bridgerton name? First, Lord or Lady. Second, your first name. At ton to the end of the last thing you drank. Four of, and then five is the brand name shoes you wore today. So oh, I, I would be on, baby. Lord Alexander Coffeeton of Guess. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's a little bit of spice at the end. Guess. <laughs> of guess. Mm. You're like, oh, um, you're making it a mystery. I no, think that's I'll never from. tell. <laughs> I, I think the one that I saw that was at least on TikTok, the last part was the first part of your street name, and then uh, Shire or something like that at the end. Ah. So. Well, I'm not gonna say that out loud because I've already told people <laughs> I live in Philly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, a it's of... a long street it goes throughout the whole city but that's too close <laughs> there's just one guy that's just one creep watching this like fuck so close yeah. i was almost there <laughs> <laughs> amazing lord cal oh. mountain dooch and mountain dootin of churchshire <laughs> lord ryan coakton uh, it would be oh. lady uh, Jolene Waterton uh, of Glenshire. Ah, oh, that's some good shit. Lord Sean Monsterton. Sean, why are you drinking a monster this early in the morning? Oh god, it's one thirty <laughs> now. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, your player, here to judge you. <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, how are we, you? We got Sean, some things to talk about. <laughs> How you doing, my dude? Lord Coffee Tin of Woodford Brook. Good. I cannot talk to myself when I haven't even moved in yet. <laughs> Can I just say something? Like, as a guy, do you know how much it sucks to know how much we suck? <laughs> <laughs> like, every time you hear something bad happen, like, there's a part of me that's just like, please don't be a dude. Please don't be a dude. Please don't be a dude. And it's just and like, then, it's a dude. And then I'm just like, damn it. Please don't be black. Please don't be black. <laughs> <laughs> Running down the scale. <laughs> it's oh just my like, God. like, do you know how much fun the world would be if there just weren't shitty guys? Mm. Yeah. That I mean, it really would. I. Really sucks. That is a hot mood. I cannot empathize in that regard because I am, I, yes, I am at best male adjacent. Uh, but I can relate to being like, whenever, whenever someone says some truly heinous shit online about like, this is a soapbox of mine that I feel like I shouldn't get on because I will get angry. 
history, <laughs> but I'm big into the history of feminism and a big part about the history of feminism is that we, uh, to borrow a term from AO3, canonically like stepped on like tons of minorities just to get our own rights kind of thing. So whenever I see that kind of shit being perpetuated online, I'm like, please don't be a cis white woman, please don't be. Yep, all right, there we go, there we are, okay. <laughs> Uh, There's your fucking shitty ass exclusionary feminism. <laughs> HA goes, uh, don't be a dude, don't be black, don't be from somewhere close. <laughs> I, I mean, because look, we are we are all tribal creatures. So on some yep. point, we all realize that we're on a team. Eric, I gotta be honest with you right now. The dude team, we are fucking up. <laughs> are fucking I, up. I'm going to... Really? ruin some people's day by saying that some of the suffragettes who fought for our right to vote were um, eugenicists. Yes! Yes, they were! Awful! <laughs> My god. Yeah, it, it's it's very much like people like to pose like that whole thing is like, it was all good and it's like, nah. We got we got some shit in our past. Uh, I mean, Shinobi, I unfortunately, you missed the that guy segment. We've already been flown past it oh i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah it was it was a good one too. Like, we we had uh <laughs> we we were talking about it for a, a, a minute but uh you can definitely catch that on the vld i think one of the things that makes you a good person is kind of looking at your team and evaluating it and being able to go like all right yeah this is where we got some work to do and i feel like you are a really shitty person when you look at your team and go, we have done nothing wrong. Ever. We're good. <laughs> we're, we're the good guys. <laughs> I, think, I think that's that's when we start to hit some problems. Uh -huh. But you know, th there there are times on Twitter where you know I'll I'll see somebody go, men are trash, and like the instinct when you're hit is to go, no, we're not, but then you gotta gotta think about it like fuck they're scared to walk out at night and i'm scared to walk out at night <laughs> it's from a penis it's just like damn uh, they right <laughs> so i'm playing through uh the batman telltale series right now and there was a moment where i won't do spoilers but there was a moment where there was a a woman who asked to meet Batman and then was like, let's meet at this really dangerous place at night. And I was like, I, my immersion is broken. My immersion is broken. <laughs> I do broke this happen. line. <laughs> uh, and um, now I found out later why she would be comfortable with that. But before I knew the spoilers, I was like, this makes no sense. I, I, I can't play this. I can't play this game. Uh, but yeah, a man absolutely. wrote this part wild. of the game. A man wrote this. I mean, yeah, he was like, it's pretty pretty unsafe to be in this area. And she's like, I just didn't want to be bothered. And I'm like, oh, you'd be bothered. <laughs> like the first time I heard about the key trick that a friend of mine used to do where they would walk around with keys like they're Wolverine. I'm like, oh my God, we suck. <laughs> we suck. <gasps> yeah, we <laughs> suck. You know, like that's how you that's how you get better. It's looking at mm -hmm. all the ways your team is failing. <laughs> um, are any of us dressed in files fans? Uh -huh. Kinda is the answer. Like the books, don't like the author. <laughs> like mm -hmm. just becoming very common these days. Good example yep. of stuff that did not age well. I, I tried to read one of the first books actually very recently and I liked the concept. I liked the idea. And then he started describing women and I was like, oh, yeah, God, I gotta go. I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, I wish uh, I hear that it gets better as the books progress. Uh, but I couldn't get past the first book. Yeah, no. it's it's yeah. it's 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 rough. It's you know, it, it, you know, I, I kind of look back on my Harry Potter reading 
uh, with new eyes. And I'm just like, I can't believe I didn't see how bad this was. There's literally somebody named Cho Chang. Like, it's just really, <laughs> it's just, it's really bad. And the whole thing where, like, the house elves, they're like, no, they like it. <laughs> they like it. And the one person <laughs> what? that uh, wants to free them and, you know, is looked at like, she's crazy. Mm -hmm. One person that sees, hey, this is wrong and you shouldn't be doing it, gets... Can we talk, can, can we talk about how fucked the portrayal of that love potion was? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> and they taught kids how to make that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the singular Irish character constantly blows things up. Yeah. I don't even. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. We we really want to be part of the run houses. The banks. Oh my god! That would, and in the movie, the the way that oh gee is, who can we talk about the vanishing black kid? <laughs> he's here now. He's not. Uh huh. Oh. I did see a, I don't yes, know if while trying real, to make so booze. Might That's be, correct. While trying to make booze. I might be talking out of my ass. But I did see that they cast um, Lavender, who ends up being Ron's romantic interest in the beginning movies, because they started making the movies before J.K. Rowling like, kept writing the books. They cast her as a Black girl, and then when it became the romance, they recast her. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hey, Warner Brothers, what's going on? Oh, don't worry about it. She just got a moon tan. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. It's so bad. Uh, love, love potions. potions were oh, go for it. I was reading the same thing. <laughs> Instead of being forbidden, curses be, uh, was because Wizards World found a way to make a profit off them. Mm. Capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I love how sick of capitalism everybody's getting. In. Like I, I love how much our politicians are showing us they don't give a fuck. Listen, <laughs> we've been in a porridge for over a year now. We see how well capitalism works for us. <laughs> it's not. Like there is a meme I saw today that made me like laugh and cry at the same time. It was just like, all right, I know you wanted the two thousand dollar stimulus. The best I could give you is Bobby Syria. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I can do. There is no ethical wizarding under capitalism. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Can we make that a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Very important. Um, give me one second. Grab it. There's no ethical notebook. <laughs> Write down that shirt idea. Get it going. Well, add it to the store. I love so that. So let me ask, when was the last time that you cried playing a TTRPG? <laughs> You're like, that's my secret cap. <laughs> I'm always crying. I'm always crying. Uh, let's see, the last time I cried in session, three weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, I think three <laughs> weeks ago. Uh, my, my wizard is going through it currently. Um, she, she's in a modern campaign and, uh, she, she recently had like two people in her backstory, like they're in her backstory, but they, they live in real life. And this is one of those wonderful examples of, uh, getting your trauma served to you in campaign. They just died within a week of each other. And, uh, she used to be a warlock and now she's a wizard. And one of them, both of them died due to her previous patron. Uh, so she's having a hard time. Uh, and so there was a moment when she was at a party and everyone was hanging out and having a good time. And she had just found out that day she'd gotten like the confirmation that one of them was dead because she was like, maybe my patron is just possessing them. So she got the confirmation that they were dead and then drove to this party and was like being very sweet and entertaining because she is this strange thing where she's a highly high charisma wizard. 
because she used to be a warlock and I was like, I'm not sacrificing that sweet, sweet charisma. She's still <laughs> a lovely, a lovely person. Um, and then she is in a relationship with an NPC and he got her alone at one point and she just like broke down and she's like, I can't be here anymore. I gotta go. I'm so fucking sad. Uh, <laughs> and that was the last time I cried. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh boy. That's you got one of them? Um, oh, uh, Coven at the end of the lane. Uh, when we did that on System Crash, um, uh, Bo made us cry um, with <laughs> telling a very lovely uh, trans witch story. Um, and we all just broke down to tears um, because uh, they managed to weave this story of them coming out to someone that they loved and cared about and them not accepting them but then the coven wound up uh, accepting them and it was just like oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so sad that one was good that was a good cry that's very sweet that's a good cry yeah <laughs> that's one that makes you happy oh man how about you noir Oh, I don't cry. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> toxic I masculinity. Oh. I'm a hard laugh. <laughs> I let one tear come out, then I suck it back up. Oh. <laughs> no, the last time was, uh, it, it didn't happen during the moment because the character couldn't afford to cry, but uh, I was playing a politician and uh, my, my, uh, my assistant was shot in front of him after he, he after he was trying to convince his assistant uh daisy that everything's gonna be okay don't worry you know i know that there are terrorists in the building but we're gonna be fine and then somebody was you know starting to work on the keypad on the other side of his door and she's freaking out he's like don't worry it's just a meeting and she goes i have your schedule i know this isn't a meeting and then the terrorist comes in and, and, and pops her, and, uh, and he has to play it off. Like, it, oh, welcome, for, thank you for coming in. Would you like a drink? But inside the whole time, I'm just like, no! Ah! <laughs> I was trying to save her! But, you know, so that was, that was a good one. That was uh, Nomadic who broke my fucking heart there. <laughs> Uh, so Faye, sad. that is correct. Last night, uh, everyone in Twilight Road was uh, having a hard time. We did a, There was a character death on Twilight Road uh, oh. in the session before last. Faye's character, uh, Zia, was... It's Zyhander, so these things happen. Character death is a real thing that can happen in this. Um, and they all went in, like, knowing that they would be okay and, like, there were safety tools involved and, like... The GM even said, like, okay, if Zia keeps doing this, Zia is probably going to to bite it. And yeah. they was like, yes, I'm okay with this. They're going to sacrifice themselves to raise the alarm to make sure that mm. this, this fortress is safe. <sighs> uh, and mm. last yesterday during the game, it was post, it was after they had, like, gathered the body and made sure like they were all paying they had all paid respects beforehand um and they uh anna um anna's character agnieszka uh went to the they're they're in the fake courts and went to the head fake um they mm -hmm. agnieszka is uh, their champion and said you are going to bury this one with honors and then uh, the Fey Queen, uh, one of the Twilight Sisters, told her, "We will take, we will take their corpse. We will bury it in our garden. A tree will be planted there that will bear fruit, and we will use it to make the finest spirits." Which for Zia's whole thing was like getting booze, getting drunk, and it was just like this perfect culmination and everyone is like, there's like not a dry eye in that stream for that one moment. Oh my god. I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not crying. Yeah. I... So Zia got made into oh. from a goblin, got made into goblin 
uh, is going to be made into goblin uh, booze, just like she, it is... just like they always wanted. Yeah, sobbing. It's so <laughs> lovely. Oh my god. Mm. So I am also the easiest TTRPG crier. Oh, uh. Kelsey wasn't there because Kelsey had to back out of. She had a bassoon recital uh, and was uh. not there for that part of the episode. But yeah, Kelsey, that happens right at the start of the episode. So be prepared to cry when you watch the VOD. There you go. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I cry at anything remotely sad, like in any kind of art. And I didn't know that it would extend to TTRPGs because I'm not a big mm -hmm. life crier. Uh, so then I started playing TTRPGs and it was like, oh, it's just art that you're participating in. And I was like, oh, no. Art I'm participation. So <laughs> I can be my favorite character. My favorite character can die. I can die. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> no. Oh my god. Don't love Ow. anything. Everything you love will die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, there's nothing. I, you know what? I, I'm like, this might be, this might just be me, but I can handle my PCs or the party's PCs dying a lot easier than I can handle a favorite NPC dying. Yes! Like, with, like, if a party member dies, I know, like, okay, it's sad that this character that I, I became friends with died, but I know I'm going to get a new cool friend soon because they're going to come I back I still get to, to play game. with that person, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. But when an NPC goes... Man, mm -hmm. <laughs> man. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna Ooh. lie. The whole time they were thinking, "Don't cry, you have body paint on," because they kind of go hard on our streams and they do a little bit of late cosplay. Yes, I do cosplay in my streams just because yeah. it's fun to yes. wear a wig, man. Yeah, yes. you gotta, you gotta. Mm -hmm. And costume pieces are cheaper than you think. Just go to Amazon, and get get yourself like a twenty a twenty dollar, ten dollar shirt. You look cool. Yeah, of course, I didn't just buy two hundred forty dollar armor. It's I, silly. I have been debate like I who you have no idea. I've just been looking at Etsy armor like. Yep. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> I only ordered the breastplate. I'm gonna go for but... Paul Dren's breastplate. There's just, there's a dwarven piece that he's been looking at. Oh, <laughs> that's good shit. Oh, it's so good. It's evil foam too, so it's like not not, not gonna be too heavy oh, during the streams. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a whole man. We can have that whole last conversation. <laughs> you I end up looking that. up really weird stuff when you're doing like cosplay for streams like i have a whole wig mount now <laughs> noir do i have some websites for you if you haven't <laughs> found them Ooh, we need to talk about have you started using snapchat or, or snap filter for your stuff what oh. no here we go what? Are, we, are we ready for this uh, we're about to we're about to <laughs> now i'm at no now i'm a fallen esmer Oh my god. I didn't even I don't even know if I have that like on my actual Zoom. I don't use Zoom enough. I have to oh my god. Yeah, it's it's its own program. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. and, Snap Filter. Okay. Yep, it it is dope. Uh hold on, let's Hey. Oh, it does your lights too. That's so cute. This is the one that I use for my Asimar. I love that. Oh, yeah, no. But yeah, there's also ones like that are really simple. Whoa! Like, I change. There you go. You got some different camera angles. Yeah, I got a couple. <laughs> uh, and wow, that's I it it updated that. and I lost all of my saved ones. I that hate is, when that no. happens. It's ha that's happened to me that several is times. Unfortunate for me. But uh, yeah, there are some really cool eye effects that you can get for your character. So we'll 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 definitely talk. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> mm. 
but oh, yeah cause... i uh very into armor very into i i'm coming out of this pandemic a full larper that's all i'm gonna say uh <laughs> have you LARPed cabinet. before no i hadn't before uh i was thinking about it but it was like my last holdover of nerddom i was like i, I haven't done larping so i'm good and then i got into this pandemic and i was like life is too short to have shame about anything and that sounds fun i'm looking uh, at my rapidly so expanding happened. cosplay closet yes 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 i'm a ghost <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, but I, I have been LARP, LARPing, take, it beats up your wallet first off. Just give, give you that warning first off. Yeah, and, get wrecked. And just be very careful with whatever LARPing uh, organization you decide to go with because some are more reputable than others. And the ones that aren't very reputable have some very questionable people involved. And that's all I'll say to that. Yeah, yeah. I do. I have friends who are like very experienced LARPers and they've been like, once this is over, we're gonna, we're gonna go. I know all the good places. And like, good, good. Because yeah, I definitely don't want to run into a place that is uh, not reputable. <laughs> yes. Yes. But uh, it is a fun hobby, especially if you, and uh, you, you're, completely able to just be silly but yeah it, that's the main thing that uh that you need going into larping is just being able to grab a piece of like, grab a bag filled with sand and yell fireball and not just think fuck i look ridiculous <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone's gotta embrace it baby a critical mrs larp meetup yes i'm in 100 yes. uh larp meetup yes. and yes. you know what i want to do larp and karaoke and I want to combine that would with be you. so fun. I am telling you that when conventions come back, I am going to karaoke with as many of you as possible because karaoke is my jam. And if you think I'm not about to bust out Blues Traveler's Hook, then you are out of your goddamn mind because I yes. play that song. Oh, my <laughs> God, yes. If someone will just sing under pressure with me, I'm happy. That's all I I'm, need in life. I'm your Huckleberry. Yes! <laughs> uh. Uh. Yep. All right, so we are about at the three-hour mark, which means we're going to start winding down. Uh, I do have uh, some winding down questions, which is, uh, again, you blew up with TikTok, uh, and you're do like you're expanding, and you're 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 like on these shows, and everything's pretty much just you're just knocking them out of the park. I have to ask you, what's it like to like have like made such a wave in the TTRPG space? Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, I. Uh, I, it really started, I made a TikTok after coming back from my home game uh, with like a, a McElroy Brothers sound and it just like took off. And I was like, people want to see this? Okay. <laughs> and like, so that's how it started. And literally last week I hopped into a stream and said hello. And someone was like, Sarah's Coffee is here, a D&D &D, like monument. And I was like, huh? I'm just online i just i just do the funny stuff uh but it, it's very wild and uh I, and i'm very grateful for it too uh being a little more serious about it i'm very grateful and um i really enjoy it because i think that there's a temptation especially in our communities to get like very upset about certain things since there are new people coming in all the time uh, mm -hmm. But I think we can like take them, take some new people by the hand and like give them some guidance, especially my personal passion is taking people who got into TTRPGs through D&D &D and it's all they know and just gently being like, hey, look at all this other fun stuff you can do. Check it out. And Heck just yeah. like making it a safe supporting environment for people to feel welcome into the further spaces of TTRPGs. That's my shit. Uh, and so, yes, I'm very grateful to be able to have the platform for situations like that. You know, like quicksand, like, oh, you stepped your foot in the D&D, &D, now we're about to make you cry now with some of these the monster systems. of the week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to play Monster Hearts? <laughs> like... Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. 
What are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> you want a sundial? <laughs> so the next question is like, what do you see? What do you see yourself doing going for, forward? Do you like? Do you have any interest in trying your hand at designing? Um, I mean, we're seeing that you're doing more streaming on your own. Like, are you mm -hmm. thinking about like running more TTRPG uh, content on your channel? And like, what kind of content are we looking at? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I think in order to get more TTRPG content on my channel, I have to have more of like a network and a structure. So the next step for that would be like establishing a, establishing a little bit more of a structure there. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love that. Uh, especially like this kind of interview content I really enjoy because I just love talking to other people about shit. So I think my <laughs> next, like, it's, mm, I love it. Uh, the <laughs> next thing that I would love to do is uh, to do some kind of like homebrew creation stuff on my channel, just like inviting someone in and like goofing off with like, what if we made a class that was like this? Or uh, just like, taking three hours and creating a bonkers one page TTRPG. I think that would be very fun, uh, yeah. but I'm going to have to create a little more infrastructure for that. But yeah, I think I see yeah. that. I see that in my future. Mm -hmm. That that would be, that would be really fun to watch. Just, yeah. just watching a TTRPG be, I was going to say birth and I'm like, that's a weird word. <laughs> like, <laughs> just create it from uh from from nothingness so that'd be pretty cool uh cannot wait to see that happen uh Anita, did you have any final questions before we go ahead and skedaddle out of here so i can get tacos <laughs> uh no i think that's actually a good place as any to wrap it um All right. yeah All are right. we gonna go yeah uh yes uh you can actually put dungeon mastering on your resume that's correct uh, yes. Hey! Solving skills, uh, organization, conflict resolution, uh, in a healthy environment. Uh, you are essentially supervising people for two to four hours. Uh, it is team building. It's very true. Uh, and it is building re relevant experience, even though those are experience points. And if you want to get into more streaming content or you want to try and get sponsors, one of the things that I advise is building a media kit. Uh, if you are in a game, make sure that you save the posters of the games that you're in uh, so you have that accessible so people can see what channels you've worked with, uh, what charities you've worked with, all that good stuff. You know, just make sure that, I mean, if you want to do anything as a job, make sure you keep a track record of all the stuff that you do. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Look! Look at that! You might you might actually get some good advice from the show every now and then. Look at or, us! Or yeah. you might get us breaking when we find out about things on Al3. You never know. <laughs> you get both. Yeah. That's that's the charm. Myself. I just reminded myself we need to get out of here. And All right, so note. we're gonna we're gonna start on outros. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll do my outro first. You find who we raid. Um, hello everybody. I'm Noir. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram as the Noir Nigla. You can find me on TikTok by dropping the the. Uh, I am a Twitch streamer. Uh, I am in a bunch of games. I should probably mention those games. Um, uh, you can find me tomorrow over on Cobalt Press's channel where I'm GMing the Into the Southlands game. On Monday, you can find me over on Roll Twenty's channel where I'm uh, producing and playing in Kids on Bikes. On Tuesdays, uh, you can find me over on LFM Network where I play with a bunch of puppets. We're playing Call of Cthulhu together, and that's fun. Uh, on, uh, and this Tuesday is going to be the series finale for the mass game I run. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say trouble in the second city, Lord. I need a nap. Uh, so second city savior on Wednesdays. I play a spy game called Hex Protocol with the creator of the spy game system, Sam Levy. Uh, Wednesdays, you can also find me on TPK World Play where I play a Curse of Strahd game. Thursdays, I play an uh, expanse game called Entanglement. And Friday, I rest. So that's me. Uh, I was about to ask when you slept. <laughs> uh, not, not often. Not often. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, yes, uh, Jen, I'll be hosting two shows uh, uh, during Gen Con's 
uh, spring showcase. So please, please, please check that out. Uh, handing oh. it over to you, Anita. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Anita. Uh, you can find me here uh, Tuesdays for Second City Saviors, Wednesdays for Vampire the Masquerade Under the Pale Cold Sun, uh, Thursdays for uh, our Cypher System Sentai game uh, upon these crystals, and then Fridays I am behind the scenes running tech on Beyond the Twilight Road. Uh, and again, you can find me here Saturdays for Morning Ritual, and Sundays you can find me over on Kobold Press uh, for Into the Southlands with Noir. Um, that is pretty much me, but I am... Uh, next week is our finale week uh, for all of our actual plays, um, so be sure to tune in for those. Uh, we are going to probably have some tears, we're probably going to have some some yelling and some cathartic cries, um, but yeah, uh, that is pretty much me. Oh, next Wednesday in the morning, we're going to be over on Gillenor's channel doing a Jasper's Game Day one-shot. It is a level 30 nice. one-shot? Yes. Yes. I am a level Hard 20 down. Eldritch Knight and a level 10 Blade Singer. It's finna go down. <laughs> uh, I'm playing yeah, a I know, level right? 30 Way of the Long Death Monk. <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> I know, right? I just, I'm so excited. What are they uh, going to throw at you? Well, we're hearing a lot about a TPK, so we'll, we'll find out. That's the reason why I made a, <laughs> made a long death month. It was mostly just so that I could spite the GM. And <laughs> All right. Amazing. And Sarah, where can we find you? What are you up to these days? Wow, hello. Well, I'm Sarah. <laughs> you can find me on my own Twitch account on woof, Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, that's when I stream. And then uh, you can find me on the Welcome In always on Fridays at uh, 7 p.m. playing my Paladin, uh, or sometimes on Sundays when I host the monthly episode of Roundtable, which is always the second Sunday of the month. Uh, occasionally, I host Cosplayground on there too. And then you can find me on Fay Fiends and Friends every Monday at 8.30 p.m. playing my half-elf wizard. Uh, those are the places that you can usually find me. Also Twitter. I'm on there so much. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. Well, that's us. Uh, we're going to go on a raid. Do we have a victim? I mean, target? I mean, person? Um, I'm in Gaming is Live <laughs> playing a Patreon one-shot. All right. So Sounds as go... good as anything. Spread some love over there. Um, yeah, we're gonna go on a raid. We're gonna go Off say hi to Unmade Gaming go. over there. Uh, thank you all, all right. for stopping by and hanging out. And Sarah, thank you for spending the morning with us. But it until... was such a joy. It was. This was so, so much fun. fun. Heck yeah. Uh, even though we broke my co-host. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, until next time, everyone, the ritual has concluded. Bye, everybody. Bye. I can Bye. never watch Dragon Ball Z again. <laughs> <laughs>